what's up fam it's me and i'm back um after the last video and touch it on uh black morality touch it on uh integration and, and 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 the price of integration for us um i decided that you know i'd hit a little bit harder and and kind of stay in that area yeah i'm gonna branch off uh, uh, to some uh, uh, to another topic, but I I'm gonna bring it all back to that area, and I'm gonna also bring it back to uh, the reason why foundational Black Americans don't need to vote. The reason why we need to sit that whole process out, and, and the reason why we don't need to vote, the reason why we don't have anything or anybody to vote for. So just bear with me, and I'm gonna bring it all back around to um. To, 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 to that point, to, to that specific point. Um, but let, let's get right into this because this may be a kind of long one because I want to bring all of these things together and show how they affect the foundation of Black American community. Uh, so what's up, peeps? Uh, I hope y'all are having a good day. If I cough a little bit during this video, it's just because my allergies, my allergies are bothering me. It's allergy season and um, some years are worse than others for me. <clears throat> but I've, I've already noticed that this is going to kind of be a bad year for my allergies. So if I cough a little bit, clear my throat, whatever, that's what it is. It's my allergies. Don't worry. It's not the corona. <laughs> it's, it's just my allergies. That's it. But um, anyway, so let's get right into this. Now, um, I don't know I, because I haven't heard a whole lot about this. Um, and I haven't, I haven't seen a whole lot of people in the new black media talking about this. But um, I think this is very important. I think it's very important because of uh, the political climate that we're in. I think it's, it's very important because of the social climate that we're in. I think it's very important because of a, a, a lot of the narratives and a lot of the agendas that are being pushed right now, and especially being pushed on the foundational Black American community. And I'm going to show how this ties in to a lot of the stuff that's going on around us and with us and, 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 and a lot of the stuff that they're trying to get us to jump on board with. But um, this article is coming from USA Today. It's by Nicole Winfield um, from the Associated Press. And it was February the 12th, 2020. So this was just last month. Uh, it reads, Pope Francis rejects proposal to allow married men to become priests in the Amazon. And um, apparently they thought that Pope Francis was going to be kind of um, forward thinking, uh, kind of progressive, you know, and that he was going to open up some doors for some different, for some change uh, in, 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 in the Roman Catholic Church and some change in some of their doctrines and, and this kind of thing. And um, apparently, let, let, let me just read. OK, let, let me read. Vatican City, Pope Francis declined Wednesday to approve the, ordinate, the ordination of married men to address the priest shortage in the Amazon, sidestepping a fraught issue that has dominated debate in the Catholic Church and even involved retired Pope Benedict, I think that's 16, yeah, I think that's 16, you know, they use them Roman numbers, and sometimes I get them Roman numbers messed up, but Pope Benedict 16, it's the X, the V, and the I. So that's 10, 5, 1. So that's Pope Victor, Pope Benedict 16. In an eagerly awaited document, Francis didn't even refer to recommendations by Amazonian bishops to consider the ordination of married men and women deacons. Rather, he urged bishops to pray for more priestly vocations and send missionaries to the region where the faithful living in remote communities can go months or even years without mass. So apparently there's um, a shortage of priests in the Amazon, in, the, in, the, in, that, in that region. And um, because there's such a shortage of priests, uh, they, they, uh, some of the bishops had come together and they had you know, asked the Pope to consider the recommendation of, or, uh, of, of, of ordaining married men to become priests and ordaining women to become deacons, right? And um, he didn't even bother to refer to the recommendation. He didn't even refer to it. He didn't even he, he didn't even give it any 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 kind of voice. 
He didn't give it any kind of recognition, no acknowledgement, nothing. He just tells these folks to pray, right? So the first point I want to make is it is kind of obvious that this has really nothing to do with uh, 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 the church being concerned about the faithful, the church being concerned about people's spirituality, um, them being concerned about, you know, folks that are far, far out and they don't have access to um, to what other people have access to. It's obvious that that's not the concern. It's obvious that the concern here is business as usual to keep things in the Catholic Church going just as usual, right? But what you guys don't understand is, or, or maybe you do, but what some people may not understand is that this was a signal. This was a signal to all of Europe and to the rest of the world that as far as married men are concerned and as far as uh, anything progressive in that direction Nothing is going to change. It's going to stay the way it is, right? Now, this is a side note. This is not this is not to veer off into any kind of religious discussion or anything like that because that's not what this is about. But this is a side note and it does need to be a part, and it does need to be mentioned here. Um the Roman Catholic uh, faith, uh, uh Catholicism, or, uh, you know, is supposed to be um, it's supposed to come out of Christianity. It's supposed to be a, 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 a form. It's, it's supposed to be Christianity. That's what it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be based in the Bible and all of this kind of stuff. And you know, we 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 had the the uh, the council at uh, um, uh, uh, Nidicia. I can't remember the name of it. Where they came together, you know, and they decided that they were going to canonize certain Bibles, uh, a certain. Um, books of the bible and and constantine you know became the uh the 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 one to usher in christianity into the roman cat you know into the roman uh empire and all of this kind of stuff and, and so you know that's the history of that and 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 you know like i said it, it, for for purposes of this video we're not going to get into all of that how that came to be but i just want to make it clear here that in no way does Catholicism even mirror the Christianity that you read about in the, the Bible, in the quote unquote Holy Bible, the King James Version or whatever version you decide that you want to get? In no way does Catholicism even mirror anything that was going on in the, the early church. It doesn't mirror that. Because throughout the Bible, all the priests were married. They were married men. As a matter of fact, a priest, a man could not be a priest if he wasn't married. Okay? He couldn't be a priest if he wasn't married. If he wasn't a married man with a family, he couldn't be a priest. So most of the priests in the, in the, in the Bible, ancient times, back in the Old Testament, and in the New um. And in the New Testament, the men that, that came in as, 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 as priests and they changed them up from being priests to being like bishops and, and pastors and shepherds and all of that. These men were married. So this thing that a man can't be married. And, you know, he has to be, you know, celibate and all of this kind of stuff. Um, that's not Bible based. OK. Now there is a there is a, 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 a section in the Bible that talks about eunuchs, and it talks about uh, uh, people being born eunuchs. It talks about you know people deciding that they want to become eunuchs, and that just means become celibate. That's what it means in the Bible. Now eunuchs originally were men that were castrated, but for the biblical purposes in the New Testament, they're talking about men that have chosen celibate lives. And it goes on to talk about in, in, in the New Testament, in the Bible, it goes on to talk about, you know, uh, it's better to marry than to burn with passion and all of this kind of stuff. And, you know, you have to walk in your calling and, you know, to be a, to, but, but, this, but to be a priest, a Roman Catholic priest, you have to be celibate. You have to be celibate. You can't be married. You know, you, you, you just have to be celibate. 
And it and so that's the first point that I wanted to make is that no way does this doctrine mirror anything that's coming out of the King James version of the Bible or any other version of the Bible that I've ever read. Okay, that's the first thing. And the second thing is what I want you to take from this is when the head of the church with all of the controversy and all of the scandal down through down through the years of 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 of, of these priests and, and and these bishops and these you know and and, and 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 all of these men having these relationships with these boys and all of this pedophilia and all of this child molestation and, and then you have other the other flip side of the story where you have these priests that were having these uh, uh relationships with these women you know and, and and they were making babies with these women and all of this kind of stuff and all the millions and billions of dollars that have had to be paid out you know to keep these people quiet and to make these scandals go away and all of that okay that's suggesting something to you that's telling you something after years and years and years of this history and you know and, and and finally the church could no longer keep it hidden could no longer keep it a secret you know could no longer buy people off to keep it quiet so we know about all the scandals so if you have all of these scandals with all of these men who are supposed to be born eunuchs, which means they, they, this is, this was their calling to be priests, to be celibate for, you know, for their entire lives or whatever the case may be. And you have all of these men involved in sexual relationships with somebody, whether it was a, 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 a boys or, 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 or teenagers or, or grown men or, or whether it was with women over here on the other, on on this hand, these men were having sexual relationships with somebody. So that that suggests that they're not eunuchs. That suggests that they're not dedicated and they were not born to this life of celibacy because they're having sex. So with all of that going on, and we have now branched into uh, uh, the year 2020, you would think that if you're really, really concerned about the state of the church, if you're really, really concerned about the state of your parishioners and the faithful, if you're really, really concerned about everybody's safety, everybody's security, if you're really concerned about everybody's spiritual well-being, you would at least consider the possibility of ordaining married men. Why? Because married men aren't claiming that they have been called into this life of celibacy. They are letting you know that, yeah, they want to have sex. That's the reason why they married. They want to have sex. They want to procreate. They want to have families, whatever the case may be. So it would appear that it's possible that married priests would not be as dangerous and would not be as much of a threat to little children and little boys and wouldn't be so much of a possibility of a threat to bring in all of this scandal because they slipping around having sex with this one and having sex with that one and, 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 and you know, over here making babies and all that. You got to go pay off people and you got to try to sweep stuff under the rug and you got to try to, you know, um, try to try to close the door on all of these scandals and all of this kind of stuff. But that just goes to show that when it's at the top, and the top says, no, we're not going to change anything. The top doesn't even acknowledge the recommendation. Doesn't even mention the recommendation. Then that lets you know that this is not about people's spiritual well-being. This is not about people's faith and, 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 and their spirit life and their faith lives and all of this. This is about keeping this institution because the catholic church is an institution keeping this institution just as it has, has always been and if these men because you heard what he said rather he urged bishops to pray for more priestly vocations 
which means pray for more for for more men coming in claiming that uh, uh this is that, that the life of a priest the celibate life of a priest a life just dedicated to uh to god or or, or, or whatever is, is is the life that they want to live he's urging people to pray for more of that for these men coming in claiming that they were born to be priests, they were born eunuchs, you know, and that they can dedicate themselves to this life of celibacy. Pray for more of that than even than to even mention the recommendation of ordaining married men. So the Roman Catholic Church is not interested in protecting its children. It's not interested in protecting, it's, obviously it's not interested in protecting its priests. It's not inter interested in protecting uh, um, the, 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 the faithful. It's not interested in, in, in providing them the spiritual guidance that they need because this region is, is having a shortage of priests. And so it's like he, what they said is, is where the faithful living in remote communities can go months, even years without mass. So there's no priest for you to talk to. You understand what I'm saying? There's no spiritual guidance. There's no mass. There's no anything. But the father who's supposed to be the, 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 the representative of God on earth, the Pope is saying, I'm not concerned about your spirituality. I'm not concerned about you having access to spiritual guidance. I'm not concerned about you having access to mass and all of that. What I'm concerned about is keeping things just as they are. I'm not concerned about the safety of your children. I'm not concerned about the safety of these priests. I'm not concerned about any of that. I'm concerned about just keeping things as they are. And that is keeping all of these so-called celibate men coming in. And they're coming in with all of their fantasies. They're coming in with all of their hidden desires. They're coming in with all of their hidden perversions and all of this. And then when they can no longer hide them or when they can no longer keep them in control, some innocent child somewhere ends up being the victim of these perverted fantasies. They act these fantasies out on children. So when it's coming from the top, that we're going to leave things just as they are. You understand what I'm saying? We're not going to worry about uh, 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 spirituality. We're not going to worry about spiritual guidance. We're not going to worry about protecting people. We're not going to worry about protecting children. We're not going to worry about that. You understand what I'm saying? We're not going to even look at the fact that not only could ordaining married men give these faithful parishioners in these remote areas the access that they need and the spiritual guidance that they need we're not going not, not only is we not going to look at it for that reason but we're also not going to look at it for the fact that ordaining married men and taking married men into the priesthood could 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 provide some answer and some solution to this pedophilia problem that we have this child molestation problem that we have in the Roman Catholic Church. But we're not going to consider that. We're not going to consider that this ordaining married men could be an answer or could be some of the answer to a lot of the issues that we have in the Roman Catholic Church. We're not going to we're not going to pay attention to that. We're not going to touch on that. We're just going to leave things as they are and we're going to pray for more of these men who claim that they have been called into celibacy. We're going to pray for more of them to come in, like I said, with their hidden desires and their hidden perversions and their hidden fantasies. And then once they get into that position or once they get into that situation where they're surrounded by all of these people, by the, they're surrounded by children, they're surrounded by single women, they're and they get to that place where they can no longer hide their desires. They can no longer hide these fantasies and they start acting them out on, on children, on innocent children, because that's what they've been doing for all of these years. For all of these thousands of years, that's what they've been doing. So 
So in a nutshell, what the Pope did was he sanctioned and gave the green light to all of this sexual perversion that's going on out here in the world right now. Because there's no way he's missed it. He can't miss it because it's right there in the Roman Catholic Church. It's been right there in the Roman Catholic Church, like I said, for thousands of years. It's been covered up. It's been hidden. You understand what I'm saying? But the scandal started breaking and, 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 and they've been breaking and busting open for years now. You know, there have always been rumors about the child sacrifices and, and, and the blood sacrifices with children and all of this kind of stuff that's going on in the Roman Catholic Church. You know, there have always been, you know, those uh, those those rumors and those allegations and everything going on. But as far as the, the pedophilia and, 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 and the sexual molestation of children and even, like I said, priests having these side relationships with women and, and having babies with these women. Uh, 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 you know, all, all of that has just come out in the last five, five, ten years, and it, and it's just you know a magnitude that you would not believe. And all, like I said, the millions of dollars that have been spent out by the Roman Catholic Church trying to quiet these scandals. So there's no way that the Pope doesn't know, and there's also no way that he does not know about all of this sexual perversion and all of this sexual deviancy that's going on throughout the world. But if, as the head of the church, not just in Europe, but also over here in the United States, as the head of the church, he could have made a statement saying, OK, it's time for us to start rectifying some of this stuff. It's time, it's time for us to start making some changes. It's time for us to start doing some things that are going to protect our children, protect our parishioners, even protect our priests from themselves. And this could have been a first step. Or at least it could have been something that they looked into as a first step. But again, it says in an eagerly awaited document, Francis didn't even refer to the recommendations to consider the ordination of married men. He didn't even refer to it. He didn't even acknowledge it. Okay. Now, remember that. Because this is coming from the head of the church. In the face of, like I said, all the scandal. And all the, the, the evidence and all the information that has come out in the last five, ten years about, uh, about how, just how large it is. Just, just how big and widespread it is. That these, excuse me, that these pr pr priests are pedophiles and, 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 and sexually abusing children and all of this. In the face of all of that, he would not even acknowledge the recommendation. Okay? So folks take their cue. A lot of folks take their cue from the church, from the Pope. So he's sending out this message. He's sending, he's sending out the signal. Okay, we're not making any changes. We're not changing anything as far as sexuality is concerned. As far as how we deal with sexuality, as far as how we protect our children, as far as how we deal with these priests, these men who obviously don't have a calling to live a celibate life because if they did, they wouldn't be molesting children. They wouldn't be molesting children. And on the other hand, they wouldn't be going out having sex with women making babies. But we're not going to even, we're not going to even look at that. We're going to leave things just as they are. Okay. That's what you take from that. That's the call coming down from the top. That we're not touching it. We're not messing with anything. We're not changing anything. Status quo. It remains as the same. And then he urges the bishops to pray 
for more priestly vocations, which means pray for more of these predators to come in. We need more of them. You understand what I'm saying? We don't need less. You understand what I'm saying? We don't need to stop and take a very good look at the men who are coming in claiming that this is their calling and claiming that this is what they're supposed to be doing and claiming that they have this calling to be eunuchs, which is to live this celibate life. No, we don't need to take a look at them and maybe start substituting some of them with married men. No, 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 no. We need to pray for more of these predators to come in. We, meet, we need to pray for more of these men to come in claiming that they're ready for this celibate life. And then once they get here and they've been here for a year or two or whatever, we find out that they're molesting children. That they're having sex with little boys. So you have to understand what this really means. This is not just, this doesn't just affect the Roman Catholic Church. This is supposed to be the highest religious authority in the whole world. And he's sending down the orders. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. Okay. Now understand that. Because we do have foundational black Americans who are Catholic. But it's sending more of a call to white supremacy. We don't change anything. You know, we're on the same page. Nothing changes. Status quo. Leave everything as, as it is. We are not making any changes. That's the message that this sends. And, 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 and rather, you know, folks that are, 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 are Catholic or, or anybody else, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, it, it's a clear statement that that the, 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 these folks are not concerned about your spirituality. Like I said, they're not concerned about your, your spiritual health. They're not concerned about making sure that you have the spiritual guidance that you need, making sure that you have access to that spiritual guidance like you need. They're not concerned about you. They're not concerned about you as an individual. They're not concerned about these folks over here in these Am Amazonian areas that, that don't have the access that they need the spiritual access and the spiritual guidance that they need. Because if they were really concerned about them, then he would have at least taken the recommendation into consideration. He would have at least said, you know, okay, uh, uh, give me some time. Let's take it into consideration. You know, let's talk about it a little bit more or whatever. But he didn't even refer to it. He didn't even acknowledge the recommendation. So that goes to show, just like it, it, just like everything else that they do, goes to show that they're not interested in, that they're, they're not concerned about the masses. They're not concerned about the people. They are concerned about their power, and they are concerned about things staying just as they have always been. Because if you start making changes, then you very well may start uh, 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 interrupting or, or uh, encroaching on, you, you don't understand what I'm saying, or affecting their dominance, their power. So this is what happens when we give other human beings that level of power over us. When we, when, when we look at them as gods over us. And we accept the decisions that they make. So that's the first thing that I wanted to do. I, I wanted to do that first because it's funny how this, he, you know, he, he decides at the very beginning of this year, February the 12th, he decides at the very beginning of 2020 that he's going to finally uh, uh, address this issue of these Amazonian priests. You know, and, and there being a shortage of priests in the Amazon, you know, and, and, and this is the statement that he makes at the very beginning of the year. We're not changing anything. Nothing changes. Everything stays the same. And instead of looking into maybe making some changes. I'm urging you to pray that we get even more of them in. We get even more of these priests in. 
So we're not looking at, 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 at doing anything to protect the children. We're not doing anything to look into protecting the parishioners and, and making sure that they have the access that they need. We're not looking into that. We're opening the door for more of these predators and more of these sexual deviants to come in. Like I said, more of these men with these hidden desires and hidden fantasies. That at some point they can't control anymore and they start acting them out on the most innocent. On the most defenseless children. Okay? Now, so that lets you know that, 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 that what the Pope is telling the world is, well, especially what he's telling white supremacy is, you know, and, and all of these demons and, and this whole wicked beast system, since he's a part of it, what he's telling them is, okay, I, 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 I'm still a part of team white supremacy. I'm still a part of team perversion. I'm still a part of team this wicked agenda for this world. I'm still a part of that. And I'm not going to make any changes. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm not going to do anything to disrupt business as usual, to disrupt the status quo. Okay. Now, you might not think that because, you know, it's over there in the Vatican, you know, and, and because it's the Roman Catholics and all of that, you may not think that it has anything to do. You may be saying, well, Kim, what does that have to do with us foundational black Americans? What that has to do with it is he's cementing, you understand what I'm saying, or affirming that the religious branch of white supremacy, the, the religious branch of the beast, is, is still in line, still in order. And like I said, you have to remember, there are foundational black Americans who are Catholics. Okay? You have to remember that. And you have to remember Catholicism is the religion in most of Europe. Not all, but in most of Europe. And in some African countries. In some melanated countries. Okay. So this is part of the programming. And since most black folks. Globally and foundational black Americans. Are so wrapped up in religion. You understand what I'm saying? And so wrapped up in their belief systems. Or whatever. Then this is part of the religious part of. The whole programming. And again, what does it say? It says that married men, men who are not denying their sexuality, men that are not denying their desire for sex, men who are not denying uh, 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 their urge to procreate. You understand what I'm saying? Men who are not denying that, th those men have been excluded. Those men have been locked out. Those men have been locked out of, uh, 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 of the Roman Catholic Church. They have been locked out of, uh, 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 of, of having any real position or any real authority in the Roman Catholic Church. All the men that have the power, all the men that have the authority in the Roman Catholic Church are these men running around talking about they're dedicated to being celibate. Which simply means they're dedicated to not procreating. That's that's simply all it means. They're dedicated to not procreating. But we have seen that those same men act out their sexual desires, their sexual needs, their sexual fantasies on children. And in most cases, it's children that they can't procreate with. Now, like I said, you have that small number of priests who finally give in to that desire, that sexual desire, and they actually have relationships with women. And some of them have actually produced children. But for the most part, they act out their sexual fantasies with boys. 
that they can't procreate with. But they'll tell their parishioners that abortion is wrong. Okay, how is abortion wrong when we got all of these men walking around that refuse to procreate? And when they decide that they want to act out their sexual fantasies, they do it with boys. But abortion is wrong. When you have built a whole religion around men that don't want to procreate. Men that don't want to be a part of the natural cycle of life. You have built a whole religion around that. You have built a whole institution around celibacy. The women have to be celibate. The men have to be celibate. But you're supposed to be serving the same God that you claim created life. But you have no desire to create life. Think about how deep that is. But because you're human beings and you have these desires, you understand what I'm saying? You have these de the desires embedded in you. They are encoded in your DNA. Because you have these desires, instead of acknowledging them for what they are, you understand what I'm saying? And handling them for what they are, you decide that when you're going to act out these desires, you act them out with little boys. So it makes you wonder. We know that the, 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 that the beginning of it was, you know, to to to, to distort religion and, and and to pass off this whole, you know, fake story and all of this kind of stuff. We we understand that that was what it was, but 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 was it even deeper than that? But anyway, we'll get into all of that later. We, we're going too deep in it. We'll get into all of that later. But like I said, this is just talking about uh, uh, how uh, uh, certain messages come down from the top. And we've always talked about how the different arms of white supremacy uh, 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 have code words and, 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 and they stay on code and they, they know how to get messages back and forth to each other and all of this. And this was just the religious arm of white supremacy in the form of Pope Francis making it clear to the rest of the uh, of, of, of white supremacy, the rest of this beast system that, no, I'm not going to make any changes. No, I'm not going to change anything. Yeah, I'm still on board with the agenda. Yeah, I'm still on board, you know, with the evil plans that we have for this world. Okay. Now. Let's take it a little. Let's go a little further. Now keep this 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 in your head, but let's go a little further. And let's get into some of the other stuff that's going on and some things that are being thrown out there and some things that are being said and all of that as far as uh, uh all this uh, all of this sexuality is concerned. Because sexuality in, in, in the last 10, 15 years has become this huge thing, especially in the last five years. And, and especially with all of this trans talk, because now it's no longer about gay folk. It's no longer about lesbians. Now it's no longer even about bisexual people. Now it's all this trans, 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 trans. It's like they have forgotten about the LGB part of it, and all they're constant, all they're constant, uh, concentrating on is the T. They've forgotten about the LGBTQ and all of this. Now all they're concentrating on is this trans. 
And the trans is the illusion. Make sure you understand that. The trans is the illusion. The trans is where they're doing everything that they can to make the illusion seem real and to make what's real seem like it's an illusion. They're doing everything to take what's right and turn it into what's wrong and take everything that's wrong and turn it into what's right. They're doing everything that they can to take what's natural and turn it into something unnatural and what's unnatural and turn it into something natural. Reminds me actually of a scripture in the Bible where they talk about trying to make light into darkness and darkness into light and trying to turn what's bitter into something sweet and what's sweet into something bitter. OK, so you have to make sure that you understand. That it's all about a, a, a programming. It's all about programming the mind. It's all about messing with the psychology. And if we can convince enough of people that what's wrong is right and what's right is wrong, if we can convince enough people that the illusion is what's real and that what's real is the illusion. See, that's the reason why you have these folks like them folks that was on the show with Malik Yoba on the breakfast club trying to, to, to blur the lines and trying to talk about, you know, it, it's the doctors that assigned you your gender when you were born. You understand what I'm saying? And coming out with all of these words talking about non-binary and, and gender fluid is because they're trying to turn the reality into an illusion and trying to make the illusion the reality. They're trying to take what is biology and what is science and make it science fiction and they're trying to take the science fiction and make it science now so you got to be careful that they don't mess your mind up like that now they're trying to say that people aren't born male or female that once they're born a doctor assigns them their gender come on now But anyway, this is this is this is an article that I found kind of interesting. And um I'm not going to I'm not going to read a whole lot of it because it is it, is is not uh all of that. But this came out December the 4th, 2019 by Brian Tannehill. And it, 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 it's, it's commentary. It came out of the advocate and it is, is refusing to date trans people transphobic. Okay. Now we got, first we had homophobic, you, you know, now we got transphobic, you know, but, 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 but it, it's funny how nobody has ever come up with the word heterophobic because that, that's the real issue. You know, I, I, heterosexual people are not afraid of. And, and again, we've already talked about this in several videos, what, what a phobia is. And a phobia, again, is an, an irrational fear of something. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but anyway, is referring to is refusing to date trans people transphobic. That's the question that's being asked in, in, in this commentary. The thin line between preferences and prejudice. Dating and finding the right person to be with is hard. It's even harder when you're transgender. Okay, that's your problem. That's your problem. And on this article, what I find funny is, I, I don't know who's supposed to be transgender, but on the article, they've got this black, I, I don't know whether this is supposed to be, it looks like a woman, but I don't know whether this is supposed to be you know, a, a woman or a man or whether this person is supposed to be transgender or whatever, but she's black and whoever she's talking to is white. So even in this, you know, they're trying to throw out this swirling thing, you know, this inter this intersectional stuff and all of that. And 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 and, and they always want to put black folks as the face of, you know, all of this LGBTQ stuff now. It's always somebody black, right? So I'm going to read just a little bit of it. A 2018 study showed that only 1.8% of straight women and 3.3% of straight men would date a transgender person. A small minority of lesbians, 29%, and gays, 11.5%, would be willing. 
bisexual, queer, non-binary, non-binary participants. I see all of these words that mean absolutely nothing. These were all combined into one group where most open to where were most open to having a trans partner, but even among them, just a slim majority, 52% were open to dating a transgender person. Right wing and anti-transgender opinion out, outlets looked at the results of this study and concluded that, of course, no one wants to date transgender people based on the assumption that people can tell if someone is transgender and that as a result, there will be no sexual attraction. However, this analysis fails based on several key facts. One is that there are transgender, transgender people who are very attractive by any conventional standard. Another is that according to data provided by Pornhub, the U.S. is the world's largest consumption of pornography and trans porn is one of the most popular types. Okay, so basically... Uh, I, I, you know, and I don't know whether the, the person that did this commentary is, 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 is part of LGBTQ or not, but what this is saying is is refusing to date somebody that's transgender. Is that transphobia? I mean, is it, it does, uh, does that mean that you have this in, in irrational fear of trans people? Because that's what a phobia is. So we're going to just start calling, you know, a skunk, a skunk. So is refusing to date tr a transgender person, does that mean that you have this irrational, unusual fear of transgender people? Or does it simply mean that you just don't want to date somebody that's trans? Does it simply mean that you just have the right to date whoever the hell you want to date? So now what they're suggesting is that once they get all of these laws in place that they're trying to get in place, that the, and the Democrats are really, 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 really pushing it. Once they get all of these equality laws and they get all of these equality acts and they get all of these, you know, special protections and special laws and all of this in to protect the LGBT people, uh, uh, LGBTQ people, especially these trans folk and all of that. Once they get all of those laws into place, then what they're going to be saying is that if you refuse to date, if you refuse to have sex with, if you refuse to have any kind of sexual romantic relationship with a transgender person they're going to accuse you of being trans uh, uh transphobic and and, and 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 eventually it'll be considered a hate crime so basically what they're saying is you'll be forced to date a transgender person whether that's what you want to do or not that's almost the same as saying that if a heterosexual man you know, goes out and, and, and he's trying to hit on all of these different heterosexual women. You understand what I'm saying? And these women refuse to date him for whatever reason. Maybe they don't like, you know, the way he dresses. Maybe don't they don't like the, the way he smells. Maybe they don't like the way he looks or whatever. Maybe they're just not vibing with him or whatever. But then we're going to pass this law that says that if you refuse to date this man, if you refuse to put yourself in that position with this man, then all of a sudden we're going to call you heterophobia, phobic. You understand what I'm saying? And eventually we're going to charge you with a hate crime because you refuse to date this person. Because you refuse to have anything to do with this person on this level. But they're not talking about doing that with heterosexual people. They're only talking about doing that with transgender people. So at some point, what this, for him to even have commentary like this, and for him to even word it the way he's wording it, lets you know that this is what's coming down the pike. That just because you refuse to date a transgender person, uh, might be because you are a man and you want to date a woman. You understand what I'm saying? A woman with a vagina and a womb and, uh, and, and, and ovaries, a woman. Not somebody claiming to be a woman, not somebody running around talking about they identify as a woman, but a real woman. 
And then you find out that this, 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 this woman that you thought you were dating is actually a man because this woman has a penis and you don't want that. But if you refuse to date this person, if you refuse to have sex with this person, as Tariq Nasheed says, if you refuse to allow this man to rape you or uh, sexually assault you, then you're going to be called transphobic, saying that you have this irrational fear of a transgender person, and they're probably going to try to hit you at some point with a hate crime. Now, remember, y'all, I just did a show about this a couple of months ago over in in in, in I, I believe it was it, it was either in england or it, it, it wasn't over in the united states it was somewhere else where this uh this transgender man had decided that he was gonna go it, it was a man this man had decided that you know he was gonna live as a woman and he was gonna identify as a woman or whatever and he wanted to get into porn and, and all of this kind of stuff. And so he had hooked up with this other dude where this dude thought that he was a woman. And when the dude found out that he was actually a man, you know, he backed up. He was like, okay, why didn't you tell me, you know, from the beginning, you know, because that's not what we're looking for. You know, that's not, you know, that's not the kind of interaction that, you know, we want to be involved in or whatever. And, and, and he actually tried to sue this man for a hate crime. They were actually investigating this man for a hate crime. And I'll, I'll put that, that, that video up in the cards somewhere. You know, it'll pop up somewhere in the cards. And, and so th that's what we're headed towards. You understand what I'm saying? But now remember, you just had the religious leader of the world saying, okay, well, we're not going to challenge sexuality. You understand what I'm saying? We're not going to deal with any issues of sexuality. We're going to leave things just as they are. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to make any changes that would head us towards being more open, open to heterosexual uh, people and, and, and married men. We're, we're not going to do that. You know, we're going to keep them excluded. And we're going to pray for more of these so-called, uh, so-called celibate men to come in. You understand what I'm saying? So that they can continue to pray on our children. Right. So this is what this this is what's coming. This is what's coming is refusing to date a trans person, transphobic. Uh, uh, yeah, transphobic. This is what's coming, people. So be prepared for it. Be prepared that your preference. You're not you're, you're no longer going to have the right to make a preference. You're no longer going to have the right to decide who you want to date and who you don't want to date, who you want to sleep with, who you don't want to sleep with, who you want to find yourself in intimate situations with. You're no longer going to have the right to make that choice. And if you make that choice based on your preference and it goes against a transgender person, they're going to try to call you transphobic and, 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 and try, probably try to hit you with a hate crime. This is what we're coming to. Okay. And this is what the Pope just condoned. This type of behavior, this type of narrative being pushed. This is what the Pope just condoned. By not even referencing, by not even acknowledging, you understand what I'm saying? By not even considering on the smallest level, allowing married men to be priests. And saying, status quo, we're keeping things just as they are and pray for more of these perverts. Pray for more of these uh, 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 sexually confused folks to come in so that they can pray on innocent people. That's what I want you to do. I want you to pray for more of that. With that statement and, or, or rather that non-statement. This is the kind of stuff that's being condoned and it's being condoned. We, we, we're showing you here that it's being condoned from the highest levels everywhere, the highest levels in government, the highest levels in education, the highest levels in religion. It's being condoned everywhere.
Okay? Now, like I said, the links to these, because I'm not going to read all of these articles. I'm just going to, you know, uh, bring them out here and point out certain things. But the links to all of these articles, of course, will be in the description box. Okay, so let's move on to this. Let's move on to the next one. Now, remember now, and like I said, when you see this article, the, the first thing that you'll see pop up in front of you is a black person. And you can't tell whether this is supposed to be a black man, a black woman, whether this is supposed to be a transgender or what. And it looks like they're having some kind of interaction with a, a non-black person, right? You can't tell whether this non-black person is, is, is Hispanic or whether they're white or whether they're Asian or whatever. But you can tell that this is supposed to be a black woman, black man, whatever, okay? So let's go on to the next story I want to touch, I want to touch base on. Because you got to remember. You got to remember what's going on. You got to remember that this is all about taking what is natural and making it unnatural and taking what is unnatural and making it natural. Taking what is an illusion because it's an illusion. It's a delusion for you to think that you can change your gender. It's a delusion to think that you can change what you were born as. You understand what I'm saying? It's a delusion to think that there's any kind of medicine, any kind of hormones, any kind of surgery that anybody can give you to change your chromosome. A female is born with the XX chromosome. A male is born with the XY chromosome. You understand what I'm saying? There's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can take that's going to change your genetic makeup. And your, gen and your gender is about genetics. Your gender is not about sex organs. Now, your gender has a lot to do with your reproductive organs, because if you were born with that XX chromosome, then you have a uterus, you have fallopian tubes, you have ovaries, you have a vagina, you have a vaginal tract. If you were born with that XX chromosome. Now, just because you, you you may not bleed every month, because all women don't bleed every month. All XX, all born women born naturally, women would they don't bleed every month. All of them don't have the ability to have a baby, and it may be because of something else in there that just that, 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 that just isn't meshing like it's supposed to. But that doesn't stop them from being a woman because they have that XX chromosome and because they have those reproductive organs. If you are a male, you're born with the XY. They can give you all the all the estrogen in the world. You understand what I'm saying? To cause you to have boobs and to cause you to get softer and to cause you to you, you, your hips to round out and all of that kind of stuff. But it's not going to get rid of that Y chromosome and change it to an X. It's not going to change your genetics. So it's an illusion. It is a delusion to think that there's anything that you can do to change your genetic makeup. You can whack off your penis. You understand what I'm saying? You can sew up your vagina. You can do all of that. And it, it's not going to change your genetic makeup. So again, the, 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 the purpose of all of this is confusion, to confuse folk. And to make you think that the illusion is the reality and that the reality is the illusion. So these folks are selling folks an illusion and these folks are buying it. You got to remember that. That's what this is all about. Selling the illusion. All right, now, this next article is coming out of The Spectator. And it's by James Kirkup. And, 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 and I think he was doing some commentary. But what I think is, I think he was trying to be, I think he was coming at it from a kind of sar sarcastic, uh, maybe um, uh, satiric type of, of, of way. But it's real. It's real. And it goes back to the same the article that I just got finished with. 
And this article is July 1st, 2019. Hold on. My computer trying to act funny. Let me get my stuff together. Because you know it can get wacky sometimes. Okay. Some women have penises. Now this is the, this is the title of the <laughs> this is the caption of the uh, of the of the article. Some women have penises. If you won't sleep with them, you're transphobic. You understand what I'm saying? And that's exactly where all of this is going. And it's closer than you think it is. You understand what I'm saying? Some women have penises. If you won't sleep with them, you're transphobic. Now, if you have bought into the illusion, if you have bought into the lie, and you are willing to try to make the illusion reality and try to take reality and make reality the illusion, then you believe this. You believe that some women actually have penises. There's no woman on the face of this earth that was born with a penis. If she has XX chromosomes and genetically was born as a woman, she doesn't have a penis. Okay? But what he's saying, and, 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 and have you noticed, it's always transgender women. We don't have all of this conversation and all of this discussion about transgender men, about women, you know, that, that, that are claiming they identify as men and all of this. We don't have all of this conversation and all of these articles and, 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 and you know, and, and all of this uh, uh, mishmash and all of this and all of these folks coming out, you know, uh, uh, saying that my daughter is, is, is transgender, you know, and saying the, and, and dressing the little and dressing their daughters as, as boys. We don't have all of that. You know, you may have a case one or two that pops up here or there, but it's not it's, it's not as it's not as widespread and it's not pushed on us as, as much when it comes to women that are supposed to be identifying as men. So that tells you something. It tells you that it is the male, first of all, that's being attacked. It is the heterosexual male that's being attacked. And because we don't have all of these white folk coming out, you know, dressing up like Billy Porter and wanting to be seen here and wanting to be seen there. You know, we don't have all of these white families coming out talking about like 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 Dwayne Wade talking about they getting ready to have their children castrated and they willing to go along with this whole thing with these little 11, 12 and 13 year old children. See, we don't have them parading around white folk like that. You understand what I'm saying? We don't have white folks bringing their children out, you know, making their children publicly the face of LGBTQ and all of this kind of stuff. So it lets you know just 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 from from the dynamics, just from the articles that we read and all the conversation that's being had that this is an attack on heterosexual men and that it's an attack on specifically heterosexual black men. They're not bringing out all of these black girls, you know, talking about, you know, they're transgender and they're, you know, and, 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 and you know, they, they, they identify as boys. They identify as men and all of this kind of stuff. You don't have them in the sports arena and all of these different places because now you got all of these, all these transgender women, so-called all of these men that are talking about they identify as women. You have them in sports and all of this and they're in a, a, fit, a, a, a women's sports. And they're beating the and, and 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 they're beating the shit out of out of natural born women. You don't have all of this conversation about girls going in the boys' bathroom because they identify as men, but you've got all of this conversation, all of this controversy about men being allowed to go into women's bathrooms with little girls because they identify as women. So it makes it clear that it's, attack, it's, an, it's an attack on heterosexual manhood and especially black heterosexual manhood, okay? Some women have penises. If you won't sleep with them, you're transphobic. And that's what it's getting to. 
is getting to that. If you decide that you don't want to sleep with a quote unquote woman that has a penis, that has a package that may be bigger than yours. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's not what you're looking for, because that's not your preference, because that's not what you want. You understand what I'm saying? You'll be called transphobic. And at some point, hit with a hate crime simply because that's not what you want. So again, like I said, and like and Tarika said this over and over and over again, you know, if you just decide that you don't want some dude raping you, you know what I'm saying? You don't want some dude sexually assaulting you or whatever, then you're going to be called transphobic and possibly hit with a hate crime. But you don't see any conversation like this headed in this direction. You don't see any laws being proposed, any bills being proposed, any equality acts or anything being proposed in this, this, in this direction for heterosexual people. You don't see them saying that if a woman decides that she just don't want to date this dude, you understand what I'm saying? For whatever reason, and because he's just not her preference, well, she's going to be uh, uh, called heterophobic and possibly hit with a hate crime because she don't want to date this dude for whatever reason. So basically what they're letting you know is they're working on doing whatever they can to make it a law where you have to be willing to date these people, be willing to have intimate relationships with these people, be willing to have sex with these people or whatever, or you're going to be charged with a crime. Because all of these people, the, 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 especially the Democrats, the Democrats are doing all that they can to make all of these people, especially these transgender mess, they're doing all that they can to give these people special rights and special protections and special privileges under the law. And they're using the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to usher all of this stuff in. They're using what was meant just for us, just for foundational black Americans. They're using that act to usher these folks in. So now they're saying you can't have a preference. You can no longer have a preference, even though for years they have screamed and screamed and screamed that we have to accept their preference that we have to accept their preference to, to, for, for same sex or for same sex marriage or for same sex relationships or whatever for years now. That's what the whole gay rights movement was supposed to be about. The world accepting that they have a right to, to have their preference, that they have a right to sleep with who they want to sleep with and love who they want to love, right? That's what it was supposed to be all about. But now what they're saying is now that y'all have given us all of this power, you understand what I'm saying? Now that the government has given us all of this power and now that we have become the bullies, you understand what I'm saying? We were always the bullies as white supremacists, but now as LGBTQ, we have become the bullies. You understand what I'm saying? We're the ones with the power. Now what we're saying is we're going to take your right to have a preference. Even though nobody ever took our right to have a preference. If you look down through history, you'll find out that some of the most powerful people in the dominant society were gay. Gay or bisexual or transgender or whatever. And they were very powerful people in the dominant society here in the United States, here in America. And they weren't discriminated against. You understand what I'm saying? They weren't oppressed. Why? Because they were white first. So their white privilege protected them. So they've never been an oppressed class of people. But what they're saying is, now that you've given us this power, now that we have come into our own, you understand what I'm saying? And now that we have this power, now that we have this dominance, 
Now that we have everybody afraid to say anything or speak out against what we do or speak out against these agendas that we push, now that we have everybody afraid because nobody wants to be called homophobic, nobody wants to be called transphobic or whatever the case may be, nobody wants to stand up against us because the minute you speak out against anything that we say, we come at you talking about you hating and you spreading hate and you homophobic and you transphobic and all of that. Now that we have that power, now what we're going to do is we're going to tell you that you no longer have the right to have a preference. And that if you don't accept us, if you don't date us, if you don't sleep with us, if you don't allow us to come in and rape you and book break you, then we're going to accuse you of being transphobic and, 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 and get to that point where we actually charge you with a hate crime. And the leader of the religious world condoned this. By letting white supremacy know, by letting this beast system know that he wasn't going to make any changes. You understand what I'm saying? That he was going to leave it as, as it is, status quo. Business as usual. I'm here to let you know. I'm not making any changes. I'm here to let you know that I'm still a part of the program. I'm here to let you know that I'm still a part of the agenda that's being pushed on the whole world. Now, I don't even need to read any of this, but I'm going to read some of it. I'm bored with writing about politics and Brexit, so this is an article about genitals instead. Feel free to make your own jokes about the sentence above, but I promise what follows is not funny. You could not, as the old phrase goes on, go as the old phrase goes, make this up. You, you just can't make this up. Most of us, I think, like to see ourselves as tolerant and open-minded. Live and let live is the prevailing social attitude of our times. For all the division and acrimony in political debate and online, British society is, by international and historical standards, strikingly liberal and tolerant. This is a good thing. People should not face abuse or exclusion or hostility because of who or what they are. We all should be judged on what we do. The eternal question of tolerance is how far it extends. We are all familiar with the old debates about whether toler toleration requires accepting acts of intolerance that you find distasteful. But that's not what this article is about. It's about whether toler toleration requires accepting genitals that you do not fancy. Okay? And yes, this relates to transgender people and the notion of transphobia the notion of transphobia. A lot of institutions, companies, organizations are terrified of being seen as transphobic. Even the allegation, however, baseless, that someone discriminates against others on the ground of their gender can cause enormous harm to a reputation. Ain't that what we're talking about? So keen are public bodies to avoid this fate that they overstep the relevant laws. The Equality Act 2010 says you can't discriminate against someone because of either their sex, whether they are anatomically male or female, or their gender assignment, such as when a person born male decides to live as a woman. But quite a lot of other, but quite a lot of councils and other public bodies routinely ignore physical sex and base their work solely on questions of the social concept of gender. That's a problem. And not just because it ignores the law. It's a problem because it overlooks the physical differences between people born male and people born female. Those differences exist and they matter for reasons that I hope don't need setting out here. So is there, there is a very physical, there is a very real physical difference between people born male and people born female. Whether folks want to acknowledge it or not, see, that's what I'm talking about. They want to take the reality and turn it into an, an illusion and take the illusion and turn it into reality. But the reality is there is a very real 
physical difference between people born male and people born female. There's a physical difference. There's a genetic difference. There's a biological difference. And that difference doesn't have a whole lot to do with, well, it has some to do with sex organs and genitals. And that's what he goes on to spell out in, in, in this article. That is, again, something I hope I don't have to spell out too clearly. But I think most people would accept that when it comes to sexual attraction and activity, anatomy matters. Heterosexual people are sexually attracted to people who have different bodies and genitals to their own. Homosexual people to those with the same genitals. But in the looking glass world of transgender rights, the proposition I've just set out is contested and even controversial. For some reason, reducing sexuality to a simple question of genital preference is reductive, exclusionary, and yes, transphobic. But his question is, how so? Well, consider the trans right mantra that trans women are women. It means that someone who feels themselves to be a woman, who says they are a woman, is a woman full stop. That person's bio biology is irrelevant because the idea of gender trumps the idea of, of gender, trumps the fact, the truth of sex. You understand what I'm saying? So basically what this man is saying is all of these laws that they're coming out and the way they're interpreting these laws and all of this stuff that they're doing as far as transphobia and all of this stuff is not based in the fact of physical sex. The physical differences between male and female bodies. The genitalia. It's all really based in an idea. An idea that because I identify as a woman, because I call myself a woman, because I want to dress like a woman, because I say I live like a woman, then that makes me a full woman, a woman, full stop. Doesn't matter what genitals I have. Doesn't matter what biology I was born with. Doesn't matter what genetics I was born with. So therefore, if you are a man, a heterosexual man, and you're not attracted to me, you don't want to date me, you don't want to have sex with me, even though I identify as a woman, but I don't have women parts. I don't have the biological makeup of a woman. I don't have the biological physiology of a woman. You understand what I'm saying? But if you're a man and you don't want to date me, then that means that you're transphobic. Doesn't mean that you just don't have a preference for my genitals. Doesn't mean that you just are not attracted to me physically. It just, just automatically means that you're transphobic. That's what he's saying here. That's, that person's biology is, is irrelevant because the idea of gender trumps the fact of sex. It's not necessary or even common for trans women to have sexual assignment, re sexual reassignment surgery. Some women have penises. Get over it. That raises many questions, including about sexual attraction. If you're a heterosexual woman attracted to men with male bodies and genitals, would you consider sex with a person who did not have such a body or such genitals? If you're a man who is sexually excited by women with breasts and vaginas, would you be aroused by someone who had neither? These aren't quite the questions asked in a recent study published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships, but that's what it boils down to. In the study, people were asked to imagine they were single and looking, and then to say which of the following they would consider as a potential dating partner, a cisgender woman, a cisgender man, a transgender woman, a transgender man, or a person with a non-binary gender, gender identification. Cis means not trans. The simple fact that the study used the term is telling since not everyone accepts the term, right? Because I don't accept that, that cisgender stuff. Either you're born a woman or you're not. Either you're born a man or you're not. I don't, I don't accept all that cis this and cis that, non-binary and gender fluid. That's bullshit. 
again, that's them trying to convince you to accept the, the to, 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 to walk away from reality and accept the illusion. Okay. You might not be completely fabergasted to learn that 87.5% of the respondents said they would only consider cis people as potential sexual partners. And if that was all the study and its authors had to say, I wouldn't be writing about it. Dog bites man isn't a story. But one of the authors of that study wasn't willing to confine herself to accurately and fairly reporting the results of the study. And I'm going to stop like right there and I'm going to let y'all go finish reading so that you can find out what she says and find out what else he has to say in um in, in this commentary, in this article. But it's, it's, it's real, real interesting. It's real interesting. But again, it, it, it just goes to confirm what I just said. They want you to accept the, re the, 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 the illusion as reality and just throw reality out of the door. The reality is, yes, there is a very real difference. Physically, physiology, physiology, you know, I have so I have a hard time with these words somewhere. Sometimes physiology, uh, uh, whatever that word is, uh, physically, uh, uh, biologically, uh, chemically, genetically, as, as, as far as your physiology is concerned, uh, there's a there's a there's a real difference between the male body and the female body. But what they're trying to say is, and like I said, notice it's always male to female as far as gender, transgender is concerned. It's always male to female. It's always these men that identify as women. These men that want to live as, as women. These men that are calling themselves women. And that's where he comes up with this, some women have penises. Okay, but if you're not interested in a woman that has a penis, because as far as you're concerned, a woman is not supposed to have a penis and the woman that you're looking for has a vagina and all the physical and, 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 and genetic stuff that goes along with it. So what they're going to say is because you refuse to sleep with this person, because you refuse to date and have any kind of intimate relationship with this person, that that automatically makes you transphobic. You're not allowed to have a preference anymore. You're not allowed to decide who you want to date, who you want to sleep with. You're not allowed to have a preference anymore. And that's what all of this is leading to. That's what every bit of this is leading to. And none of it is based in science. You understand what I'm saying? None of it is based in biology. None of it is based in truth. None of it is based in fact. It's all based in this idea that you can decide your own gender. And then it's based on how you feel today. You woke up this morning feeling like a woman. You woke up this morning feeling like you were going to identify with a woman. So that just automatically makes you a woman and supposedly gives you all the rights and privileges of a woman. Even though physically, genetically, biologically, you are a man. You are a male. And it's very disrespectful to women. But just like I said in one of my other videos, Nilly Fuller talked about all of this. Nilly Fuller talked about uh, uh, the sexuality and talked about how the black vagina was going to be replaced by the white man's anus. And how the black woman, I'm not talking about some cis or, or, or I'm talking about women born as women, how the black woman was going to become obsolete. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're replacing the black woman. With this illusion of a woman. You understand what I'm saying? Not a real woman. They're replacing the real woman with an illusion of a woman. And they're going to try to, to try to enact laws that force men to accept that. Or either be called transphobic and hit with a hate crime. Okay? 
Now, those are just those are just, you know, three, that's just three articles, y'all. And we've been here for over an hour. That's just three articles. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not done. But you have to understand how this comes from the top and how the top, as far as religion is concerned, how the top has let the rest of white supremacy and the rest of this beast system know that as far as religion is concerned, we're not going, we're not going to challenge anything. We're not going to change anything. You understand what I'm saying? We're not going to challenge what you're do doing as far as the agenda is concerned. We're, we're not going. We're not going. We're not going to do that. We're, we are. We are in line, and we are still a part of the team. We are still a part of this whole evil setup. Okay, and 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 it, and it goes back to again. Um, in the early part of the the resident the presidential race. You, you know, you had a few Democrats that, you know, kept wanting to come out, Kamala Harris and some others that kept wanting to come out and talk about all of these black transgender women that were being killed. You know, for a moment there, they tried to make that a, a big thing and tried to act like they were interested in the, in the black LGBTQ community or whatever the case may be. And, and, you know, and they wouldn't tell the whole story. They wouldn't tell that, that most of these folks were being harmed by other people that were a part of the LGBTQ community. Just like I talked about before, that whole Matthew Shepard thing, and they tried to use him as the face of homophobia, you know, and, 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 and hate crimes against uh, uh, gay folk and all of this. But then when you find out the whole story, you find out that he was actually killed by his uh, uh, one of the persons that was charged with killing him was actually one of his ex lovers. And it was actually a bisexual dude that he was having a relationship with. And that th that whole crime didn't have anything whatsoever to do with anybody's sexuality. It was all behind drugs and all of this kind of stuff. Like they really, like they really, really care about the black LGBTQ community. And I've said this before, if they really cared about the black LGBTQ community, then the first time they brought a black body out of Ed Buck's house, something would have been done about it. But they took two dead bodies out of Ed Buck's house. Two black gay men were found dead in Ed Buck's house. Ed Buck is this, is this gay millionaire that donates all of this money to all of the, uh, uh, the the democratic campaigns and all of this kind of stuff he's just he's just you know one of these huge donors he's took pictures with hillary and and and, and the clintons and, and so many other folks and all of that and two black men two gay black men were found dead in his house and absolutely nothing was done and black folks were demanding justice and black folks was demanded that he be investigated and that he be arrested and all of that and nothing was done so when the, the the third black person that we know about now there's no telling how many gay black men have died in ed buck's house that we know nothing about but there are only two that we know about that actually died there and then there was this third one that that, that was shot up you know and all of this kind of stuff and and, and somehow or another he managed to escape and it was only after this third person came out and kind of collaborated everything that had been said about the other two and what had happened with the other two. Only then did they decide that they were going to uh, uh, charge Ed Buck and arrest him and put him in jail and all of this. And he's still not being charged with anything that has to do with the murder of those other two black men. He's on some kind of kingpin uh, a drug charge thing or something. That's all that he's locked up for. He's still not being investigated for murder. But two black LGBT men were brought out of his house dead. So that goes to show that the white LGBTQ community doesn't give a damn about the black LGBTQ community, except for when they want to use you. Except for when they want to use you to push their agenda. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and they want to use you as mascots and they want to use you as the face of LGBTQ and they want to push you out in front of other black people to try to get us to go along with the program. But that's it for this story. Now, 
Another story I want to bring to your attention. And this one is kind of switching gears a little bit. But it still has to do with what's going on as far as the LGBTQ community and, 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 and the foundation of black Americans, right? Okay, and you know that they're quick to call us homophobic. You know, it's always somebody that wants to come out, especially somebody black. You know, somebody that's, that's on the route or, 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 or somebody that's in Madame Noir, that writes for Madame Noir, or, 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 or some of these black bootnicks or whatever, or, or, or some of these black members of the LGBTQ that are bought and paid for by the Democrats. They always want to come out and they want to call black folks homophobic. You know, Tank was came out with this big shit talking about we homophobic, black the, the homophobia in the black community. You know, they 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 got at Kevin Hart, you know, and 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 he had to give up his job, you know, at with the Oscars and all of that because he made ho the so-called homophobic jokes and all this. They done already made Joy Reid apologize, talking about for some homophobic statements that she made. So they're always trying to throw out this narrative that the black community is so homophobic. Right. And now they're going to try to throw out this narrative that we are so transphobic. You understand what I'm saying? Because black men don't want to be raped by other men. They don't want to be sexually assaulted by other men. They don't want to be forced into relationships with men that have penises just like them when they thought they were with women. OK. So. um, It's you, you know, it's they, they, they're good for throwing that out, but. I just wanted to show this because I want to talk about how these folks aren't being called homophobic. Now, this uh, I got this article from Five Pillars. Uh, it came out three weeks ago. So it came out sometime in February. Orthodox Jewish schools tell government they won't teach LGBT lessons. Now, this is an Orthodox Jewish school. Right. And this is not in this wasn't in the United States. This was in the UK. But, you know, usually what happens in the UK is not long before it's, it happens here in the United States or vice versa. What happens in the United States is not long before, you you know, you see the, the mirror of it in the UK. But this Orthodox Jewish uh, uh, schools make it clear to the government that they will not teach LGBT lessons. Rabbis representing Britain's main Orthodox communities have told the government that their schools cannot discuss LGBT related issues with pupils. According to the Jewish Chronicle, the rabbinate of Chinook, UK, have made it clear that its 35 or so private schools cannot comply with the latest pro LGBT directives from the state. So, even over in the UK, you know, the government is forcing, is passing laws, forcing people to teach LGBTQ in schools. You know, we have it all here, and all, you know, all the schools here, well, not all of them, but, you know, it's heavy in Illinois, it's heavy in, it's real heavy in these democratic states, in these states where the governors and, 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 and the mayors and, 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 you know, and the state representatives and all of these kind of stuff are Democrat. Well, all of these laws are being passed that you have to, it's mandatory that you teach LGBTQ in schools, some kind of LGBT, LGBT history or whatever. They don't have a history. They don't, they, they, they don't have a history. If, if you want to teach their history, their history stems back to Europe and, and, and ancient Greece and ancient Rome, you know, and pederasty and all of that kind of stuff. But 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 over here in the, in the United States, they don't have a history. You know, you have a lot of historical figures in the dominant society that were LGBTQ. But that's not LGBTQ history. That's just American history. They didn't do the things that they did. And, and, and make the accomplishments that they made because they were LGBTQ. They did it because they were white. Just like, you know, this year for Black History Month, you know, they tried to tie in, you know, in, into Black History Month. They tried to promote, you know, all the, uh, the, 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 the Black folk, the foundational Black Americans that were LGBTQ. 
You understand what I'm saying? And they tried to act like, you know, their accomplishments were because they were LGBTQ. No, their accomplishments were because they were black. They were black first. They were LGBTQ second or last or whatever. But they were black first. And their accomplishments were because they were black. Didn't have anything to do with their sexual orientation or their sexual pre uh, preference or whatever. But see, that's what's wrong with black LGBT versus white LBG2. LBG, white LGBTQ understand that they are white first. They understand that they are white first. They understand that is that, that it is their their white status that gives them that white privilege. So they understand that they are white first. LGBTQ second, last, whatever. Black LGBTQ got it mixed up. They want to be LGBTQ first and black last. Until white supremacists come after them. And their LGBT, LG, L, whatever, all that get some, all them words, them letters. But anyway, and their LGBTQ status can't protect them. And then they realize, okay, well, you've been black first all the time. So they put LGBTQ issues above black issues. They put being LGBTQ above being black. White folks don't do that. The dominant society does not do that. White LGBTQ don't do that. They put white above everything. Why? Because they understand it is the whiteness that causes them to have all the benefits and all the privileges that they have in the United States. Doesn't have anything to do with their sexual preference. Their sexual identity. Doesn't have anything to do with that. But they'll fool black folks into, into going that route. They'll fool your dumb ass into going that route, you know, and, and into trying to put LGBTQ before you do your blackness. So you'll support LGBTQ issues before you support black issues. But the dominant society is not going to do that. All right, anyway, let's finish. Orthodox Judaism, like Islam, prohibits homosexuality. However, no Muslim schools have taken such a clear stand against LGBT teachings up to now. In a statement, Chinook UK said that schools should not describe to pupils lifestyles prohibited by the Torah and ensure that inspectors do not speak to pupils about these matters at all. They said schools, when asked by inspectors, should state clearly and respectfully that they do not cover these subjects. Okay, now if you read this, and it's not a very long article, and I'm not going to read anymore, but it'll be linked so you can read the rest of it if you want to. If you read this article, nowhere in this article are these Jewish rabbis being called homophobic? Nowhere in this article are they being called transphobic? Nowhere in this article are they talking about uh, 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 that they're discriminating against trans people or they're discriminating against gay people or they're discriminating against LGBTQ or whatever. Nowhere in this article will you find any of that language. You don't find the word homophobic. You don't find the word transphobic. You don't find the word discrimination. You don't find that anywhere in this article. And they are making it clear to the government that they are, that they're just not going to teach it. No matter what the government says, no matter what the inspectors say, whatever, they're just not going to do it. But nowhere are they being called homophobic or transphobic or, 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 or being said that they're discriminating against or, or being called toxic, you know, because they're good for calling out heterosexual black men talking about toxic masculinity and all of that. Nowhere in this article is anybody being called toxic or anything like that. But if these were black folks, if these were foundational black Americans or if these were even black folks over in the UK, 
And they, and they were making it clear, well, in our communities, in our schools, we're just not going to be teaching it. The first thing that would have came up is they're, they're homophobic, they're discriminating, they're transphobic. Those are the first words that would have been thrown out there. So black folks, it's time for us to start breaking this stuff down. It's time for us to start understanding that when we accept this mess and that when we vote for these people, the Democrats right now, and, 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 and I read a, a comment that somebody made where they're saying that we're doing all of this critiquing and we're doing all of this criticizing of the Democratic uh, uh, Party and we're not doing that for the Republican Party. Well, the reason why we're not doing that for the Republican Party is because we don't have a history, an intimate history with the Republican Party. For the last 50, 60 years, we have been loyal to the Democratic Party. It's the Democrats that we have been loyal to. It's the Democrats that we have loyally voted for in the last 50, 60 years. It's the Democrats that we have had this intimate relationship with. So we have the right to, to, to criticize them. We have the right to critique them because it is them that we had the relationship with. We haven't had that kind of relationship in the last 50, 60 years with the Republican Party. We haven't systematically, loyally voted for the, the Republicans. We haven't systematically, loyally given our support to the Republicans. So we don't need to critique them. We haven't looked to them to do what they promised us that they would do. We haven't looked to them to support us like we were supporting them. We haven't looked to them to be loyal to us like we were being loyal to them. So we don't need to be critiquing them. We need to be critiquing the folks that we was dealing with. And the folks that we've been dealing with for the last 50, 60 years is the Democratic Party. Those are the folks that we have been dealing with. Those are the folks that we have been lending our support to. Those are the folks that we have been voting for. Those are the folks who were supposed to be as loyal to us as we were to them. So we don't have any business critiquing the Republicans and the Republican Party. We already know how crooked the Republican Party is. We've always known. We always known how racist they are. That's the reason why we were supporting the Democrats because the Democrats were supposed to be our friends. The Democrats were the, were the ones that were supposed to be looking after us. The Democrats were the ones that were always uh, uh, pointing out to us, oh, those Republicans don't like you and oh, they're so racist and all of that. Vote for us. You know, we have your best interest at heart and that's what we did. So that's the reason why we're critiquing the folks that we support. And we have every right to do that. And we have every right now to stop supporting them now that we realize that they just as full of shit as the Republicans. They just as racist as the Republicans. They are just as against us as the Republicans. Okay, now I want to go to another article. And this is something that's, that, that, that happened right here at home. Now, now the, the, the Jewish thing and the Jewish folks saying, no, we're not teaching that in our schools is over there in the UK. But now I want to bring it home. And I want to show you again how when it comes to other groups, you know, those words homophobic and transphobic and toxic masculinity, you know, and discrimination and all of this kind of stuff, those words aren't thrown out so much for other groups when they refuse to allow LGBTQ agendas and LGBT, uh, uh, LGBTQ narratives to, to, to when, when they don't allow that into their communities and into their events and the things that they got going on, you don't hear those words thrown out at them like you do when it's black folks that say, no, you know, that's not that's not the agenda that we're trying to push. That's not you know that's that, that's not that's not what we got going on here. You know that's not what we're interested in. That's not what we're doing. 
or whatever. Well, when we do that, like I said, homophobic, transphobic, toxic, toxic masculinity and all of that. But when it's these other groups, these non-foundational black American groups, you don't hear those words so much. OK, now this is out of ABC News. Julian Shan Barrow, March 2nd, 2020. After coming out as bisexual, Miss Staten Allen is banned from St. Patrick's Day Parade. I'm proud of the community that I am from, and I'm proud to be Miss Staten Allen, Madison Ele Insulata said but I'm not going to hide who I am. Okay, well, to make a long story short, Miss Staten Allen came out as bisexual and she was slated to, to march in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, right? And the leader of the parade said, no, she couldn't do it. She couldn't march in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, you know, with all of this pride stuff and waving pride flags and, and all of this kind of stuff that, that she couldn't do it because that's not what the parade is about. That's not what the St. Patrick's Day Parade is about. Larry Cummings, president of the parade committee that was responsible for the decision to exclude uh, Miss Staten Island could not be reached for a comment. However, Cummings, Cummings has been a vocal opponent of including LGBTQ people in the annual event. In 2018, he told the Irish Voice, our parade is for Irish heritage and culture. It is not a political or sexual identification parade. Now that's bottom line. Let me read that again. Our parade is for Irish heritage and culture. It is not a political or sexual identification parade. Just last month, Cummings responded in apparent exasperation when asked if the parade would change its stance on LGBTQ inclusion. Here's the deal. It's a non-sexual identification parade and that's that. No, they are not marching, he, he told the Staten Island advance. Don't try to keep asking a million freaking questions, okay? Hold on, y'all. That's why I was chewing some gum. So this man is just making it this, you know, this man is just making it clear that this parade is about the celebration of Irish culture, Irish heritage, Irish pride. Um, that it didn't have anything to do with anything political. It it, it wasn't it, it wasn't it, 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 any kind of political statements that were going to be made in this parade, and there were also no sexual statements that were going to be made in this parade. That that was not what it was about. He said, "Here's the deal: it's a non-sexual identification parade, and that's that. It's about Irish pride." It's about pride in the in, in the Irish culture, in their heritage, in their community. And it has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with sexual identification. It has nothing to do with any of that. So that's the reason why none of that was, was being included. But the point I want to make is when you read this article, and I read the whole article, I won't read anymore. Like I said, it'll be in the, linked in the description box and you can go finish reading the article. But when you read the article, now the word discrimination comes up a couple of times. That, that word discrimination does come up a couple of times. But when you read this article, nowhere is the entire uh, uh, Irish American uh, uh, community being bashed, you know what I'm saying, or being slammed for being homophobic, transphobic, you understand what I'm saying? You don't hear anything about this man being called toxic or this man exhibiting any kind of toxic masculinity. You know, you don't have 
uh, uh, people uh, doing protests and all of this kind of stuff, protesting him and, and protesting the committee, the parade committee. committee. You, you know, you don't have politicians and all of this coming out, you know, demanding apologies and demanding that this man apologize and, and, and you know, calling this man homophobic and transphobic and all of that. You have none of that. You have none of that. And you don't have people in the Irish in the, in the Irish American community banning uh, or boycotting the, the parade or, or refusing to march in the parade or, or, or refusing to show up at the parade or whatever simply because, you know, of the LGBTQ exclusion. As a matter of fact, Miss Staten Island was still there. She was still there on the sidelines waving um her Irish flag and, you know, with her, with, with her pride colors on and all of this kind of stuff. So it's not like any, any of these people boycotted the parade. Why? Because their heritage, their Irish American heritage is more important to them than their identity as LGBTQ. So their culture, their heritage, who they are as American, Irish Americans, it was more important to them and showing their support and their pride and their love for their culture and their heritage was more important than, you, you know, boycotting or, 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 or causing some big uproar and some big protest and all of this kind of stuff because they excluded the LGBTQ part. But had this been some black organization you understand what i'm saying had this been you know some black people that decided that they wanted to do a foundational black american parade or whatever you understand what I'm saying? to celebrate our heritage to celebrate our culture and all of this and we had decided that, that, that this is simply about our culture it's simply about our heritage it's not political it's not sexual it's not about sexual identification it's just a, a, a celebration of our culture and our accomplishments as a culture and our accomplishments as a people. If we had decided to do something like this and we had decided that we were not going to allow, you know, LGBT to be the focus and, LG, and the LGBT uh, uh, agenda to take over or whatever the case may be, then we would have been slammed. The whole foundational Black American community would have been slammed for being homophobic, being transphobic, discriminating, toxic masculinity, all kinds of stuff. You understand what I'm saying? They would have paraded out their Black puppets and the Black puppets would have called for a ban and they would have called for a protest and they would have called for a boycott. You know, we would have had all kind of uh, black celebrities and, 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 you know, all kind of politicians and everything coming out, slamming the whole black community for our homophobia and all of this. Simply because we want to show pride in our culture. Show pride in, in, in the accomplishments of our people. Something that's non-political, something that has nothing to do with sexuality, nothing to do with gender or anything like that. Just us as a culture, us as a people. We would have been slammed. And all kind of people would have been out demanding apologies and, and, and demanding that, you know, that LGBT be allowed to participate and all of this kind of stuff. So see, this, this is the kind of stuff that shows you clearly, clear evidence that, that the agenda is against the foundational black Americans. That, 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 that the white LGBTQ is not really as sensitive as they put out to be unless it's somebody black. Just like with the whole Kevin Hart thing, when they when they when they came up with all of these old tweets or whatever it was, where you know he was making these jokes and they and they called him homophobic or whatever. Well, then they started pulling up stuff that Amy Schumer and and some other folks had said. You understand what I'm saying? That could also be classified as homophobic. You understand what I'm saying? Amy Schumer made no apologies and she made it clear that she wasn't taking down anything that she had said that she was not deleting or, or removing those tweets that she had made back in the past. And nobody demanded an apology from her. You, you know, nobody challenged her. You know, nobody talked about taking gigs away from her and her not being allowed to perform here or perform there or, 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 or taking anything away from her. There was no punishment for her. 
And she made it clear that she wasn't removing anything. But Kevin Hart, you know, had to go through this whole apology spiel. You understand what I'm saying? They talked about taking the Oscar gig away from him, you know, and he said, okay, well, you know, just, just take it or whatever. And then, you know, he, he you, all of this, he was called homophobic, you know, all of this kind of stuff. So there was punishment. There was backlash for him. You understand what I'm saying? But Amy Schumer, there was nothing. And she was bold about it. And she made it clear that she wasn't taking nothing down. She wasn't deleting nothing. And she wasn't apologizing to nobody for nothing. But that's the difference between being white and being black. And that's the difference between being white LGBTQ and being black LGBTQ. Just like I said, white LGBTQ understands and they embrace the fact that they are white first. Because they understand all of their power, all of their privilege, all of that comes from being them being white and being members of the dominant society. Has nothing to do with the LGBTQ part. But black folk got it all twisted. And then we let these feminists and we let these uh, white LGBTQ and these white feminists pump us up, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and make us do dumb stuff like choosing LGBTQ issues over black issues when you are black first. And as soon as you go against the dominant society, as soon as you push against the dominant society, as soon as you decide that you're going to speak out against some agenda or something that the dominant society is doing, they will let you know that you are black first. But since this situation with, with the, with the Miss Staten Island thing was, you know, because she came out as bisexual, when, since this thing was closer to home and it was more, and it was closer to home than, than what the, the, the Jewish community got going on over there in the UK, that's the reason why I wanted to point this out and point out how the whole Irish community was not slammed and not bashed and not labeled as being homophobic or transphobic. And how even though these people with this LGBT stuff were, 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 were not allowed to march in the parade, they were still there showing their support. Why? Because their Irish American, American heritage is more important to them. They realize that's what comes first. The LGBT comes second. That's what comes first. But I just wanted to use those two uh, uh, examples and use those two articles to show that when other people, other groups stand against LGBT, stand against the agenda, stand against the narratives, stand against certain things, you know, stand against LGB trying to, trying to you know, bulldoze this way in and take over, you know, and, and push their agenda above everything else. When other groups say, no, we're not going to have that. No, we're not going to do that. That whole entire group is not bashed and labeled as homophobic or transphobic, you know, or, 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 or words like toxic masculinity aren't thrown out there. You know, and you don't have this whole big uproar from, from, from all of these different people demanding protests and, and boycotts and all of this kind of stuff. That only happens when the black community says, no, you know, this is not about LGBT. No, this is about something else. No, this is not the road that road, this is not the, the, the route we're going to take. We're taking a different route. It's only when we do that. That all, you know, that they come out with the big guns and the whole community is labeled as homophobic or transphobic or, or you know, t black toxic masculinity this and toxic masculinity that and all of that. It's only when we do it that it becomes a big deal. And it becomes such a big deal that, you know, everybody got to have a say so. Everybody got something to say. You know, like I said, they start stringing out all their little black puppets and all of this kind of stuff, you know, to call us the whole black community homophobic. And there's more homophobia in our community than there is anywhere else. That's just like when we speak out 
against groups that, you know, have piggybacked off of us, groups that have used us, you know, to get here and to benefit from being here, you know, and we decide, okay, well, we're going to separate from those groups and we're going to only look after us and we're going to only look after our own. We're only looking after foundational black Americans. Then all of a sudden we become xenophobic. And we're discriminating discriminate against immigrants and we're discriminating against this one and we're dis and we're divisive and all of this. But when other groups do it, nobody has anything to say. When other groups separate themselves and they look after their own and they look after their own interests and they look after just their group, nobody calls them xenophobic. Nobody says that they're being divisive. It's only when we do that that the xenoph that, that you know we're xenophobic and, and and we're being divisive and we're discriminating against immigrants and you know we're discriminating against this one and that one and all of that. No, it's not discrimination and no, it's not xenophobia. We're just finally waking up and realizing that after all of these years of looking after other people and looking after other groups and, you know, and, and, and championing other group people's causes and putting on the capes for other people and going in, you know, to be the superheroes for other people. Now we're at the very bottom of the bottom. All of these other people who just got here are already above us and nobody's championing for us. Nobody's putting on any capes for us. Nobody's speaking up for us. So we're finally waking up and realizing that we got to take care of ourselves because they've been telling us for years to hold our own nuts. They've been telling us for years, you know, you, you just got to figure it out for yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we understand you helped us get here. Yeah, we understand we're eating off of your table. Yeah, we understand we're benefiting from what was supposed to be for you. Yeah, we understand that, but you got to hold your own nuts. You got to figure it out for yourself. So now we're just telling people the same thing that they've been telling us. You got to hold your own nuts. You got to figure it out for yourself. We're not here to champion for anybody else anymore. We're not here to champion for, for the immigrants. We're not here to champion for the, the L, L, LGBTQ. We're not here to champion, you, you know, for, 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 for the minorities. We're not here to champion for those people anymore. We're not putting on capes anymore. We're reserving our capes to look after our own group, Foundational Black America. And we've got to stop allowing people to shame us you understand what I'm saying? Into, into believing that we have to be the ones to speak up for everybody else. We have to be the ones to campaign and champion for everybody else. Nobody's doing it for us. And then at the end of the day, we're left out in the cold. After we've lifted our voices for everybody else. And then we've lifted our voices and screamed for everybody else. That when it's time for us to lift our voices for ourselves, we're hoarse and we don't have a voice anymore. And nobody's going to lift their voices for us. So it's time for us to stop letting people shame us into believing that that's our job. Our job is that's not our job. We got that mess. That, that's the old slavery mentality mess. That the slave looks after everybody else and the slave takes care of everybody else. And the slave protects master and protects what master has and protects master's uh, 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 possessions and all of that. And, and the slave is left with nothing. And if the slave just happens to get a little crumb or two off a of master's table, then the slave is supposed to be grateful. No. Not when we built the table. We built the table. We built the house that the table is in. And we prepared all the stuff that's on the table. So, no, we don't have to be grateful. That's part of, uh, of the psychology that we look after everybody else and that we feel some type of way and that we're made to be shamed or we're made to be to feel bad when we decide that we want to stand up for ourselves and we want something for ourselves when we created it all. So, you know, that's the reason why I wanted to bring you this story about Miss Staten Island that was closer to home to show the difference between how other groups and other communities are treated when they stand up for themselves. You understand what I'm saying? And when they say, no, you know, this isn't going to happen. We're not going to include this. We're not going to include that or whatever compared to what happens when foundational black Americans stand up and say no. 
and we start standing up for ourselves and we start speaking up for ourselves. All of a sudden, there's this huge backlash that comes at us, that comes at the whole community. As you see, it didn't happen to the Jews in the UK and it didn't happen to the Irish Americans with this St. Patrick's Day parade. And I want to bring I, I want to bring to attention just to your attention just one more story, just one more article to drive home this fact some more. So that my black LGBTQ who might be listening to this broadcast or who might run across this broadcast or whatever, so that you can understand that this isn't so much about your 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 status as LGBTQ. This is more about your status as being black, being a foundational black American, and understanding. That that is what comes first, that you are black first, second and third, not just black first anymore. You are black first, second and third. I got that from Team Rob. You are black first, and it, and it makes absolute sense. Your blackness, your black heritage, your foundational, uh, foundational black American heritage has to be the most important thing at all times. Your blackness has to be the most important thing. When you are faced with a choice of do I support black issues, issues that really affect the foundation of black American community, or do I support uh, uh, um, LGBTQ uh, 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 issues or, or, or any other issues that they might have on the table? You have got to be able to make that decision. I got to support the black issues first. Why? Because I'm black first. I was born black. Before I ever grew up and realized that I was a part of the LGBTQ community or, because, or before I ever woke up and realized or whatever that I was gay or that I was bisexual or, or transgender or whatever you want to call yourself. Before you did any of that discovering, you were black. Before you knew your name, you were black. Before you knew how to speak, you were black. Before you knew how to walk, you were black. So before anything else, you were black. And that's what black folks have got to get back to. There used to be a time when our blackness was what was important to us. When they talk about all the gay people and all the LGBTQ people that were a part of the civil rights movement or, or that were active during the civil rights movement or were a part of the revo that, that, that revolutionary era or whatever, those people understood that they were black first. So they were they were fighting for civil rights. They were fighting for the right to just be treated as humans because they were black. Didn't have anything to do with their sexuality. Because they realized that they were black first. They realized that the reason why they were treated different, they realized that the reason why they were ostracized, they realized the reason why they were oppressed, they realized the reason why they were being discriminated against was not because they were LGBTQ, but because they were black. All right, now this story comes from Metro Weekly. August 9th, 2019 by John Riley. New Jersey mayor calls teaching LGBTQ history in schools absurdity. Barnegat Township Mayor Alfonso Cerulli also called the LGBTQ movement an affront to Almighty God. And I'm not going. I'm not going to read this article either. You understand what I'm saying? It'll be linked. You can read it for yourself. But basically, this mayor speaks out about. Um, the new laws that, that were forcing, you know, folks to teach LD, L, L, LGBTQ history and all of that as part of their history classes and all of this kind of stuff. And, um, and, and, and you know, he went at it from a religious stand, standpoint. And he also said that it infringes on parents' rights and crosses the line into absurdity. You know, and he was calling and he did this during a public uh, a meeting and he was calling for parents and, and for the public to speak out and for the public to contact, you know, their legislators and their lawmakers and all this kind of stuff and demand that these laws be looked at and these laws be appealed and all of this kind of stuff. Because he's just really, really against this forcing of LGBTQ to be taught in schools. 
And um, I read the article. And a couple of times uh, the word bigot or uh, bigotry was used. And um, the, the word discrimination, I think, may have been used in this article. But nowhere in this article is this man called homophobic. Nowhere in this article is this man called transphobic. Nowhere in this article is anybody talking about this man exhibiting, uh, exhibiting toxic masculinity. Uh, nobody, nowhere in this article are they demanding that this man apologize. Nowhere in this article are they demanding that this man lose his job. Nowhere in this article are you going to see any of that. Now, yes, there are some people in this article that speak out against what he said, and you know, and they don't, you know, they don't necessarily like the way he said it, or they don't necessarily like the fact that he came at it from a religious standpoint. They don't like the fact that he did it doing a public forum or whatever. But like I said, basically nowhere is this man's job, is anybody calling for this man to lose his job? Nowhere is anybody calling this man toxic, you know, and, and saying he's exhibiting any form of toxic masculinity. You know, nowhere are, are they saying, you, you know, he needs to apologize and all that. None of that. You're, you're not getting any of that. Yeah, you get a few people that criticized him a little bit. Like he said, he was expecting the criticism. He understood the criticism and all of that, but he, he was standing his ground or whatever. Um, so he got a little crit criticism, but you know, there were no pro there, there was no protesting. You understand what I'm saying? There was no boycotting, you know, there were no people standing, you know, all around, you, you know, the mayor's office outside protesting with signs and all of this kind of stuff, calling him a a a a, 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 a homophobic or, 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 or whatever. None of that. None of what you would have seen had this been a black man. Had this been a black man speaking out in, in, in the same type of arena, nowhere the kind of backlash and, 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 and the kind of uh, um, rhetoric and the kind of bashing that you would have seen had this been a black man. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, they didn't parade out all the politicians, you know, to speak against this man. Nobody threatened this man's job. Nobody's demanding that this man be fired. None of that. Nobody's demanding that he apologize. None of that. Like I said, yes, he got a little criticism, but nothing on the level that it would have been had this been a black man speaking the same stuff as far as schools are concerned and, and, and you know, and it's an affront to God and all of this kind of stuff. Had this, like I said, had this been a black man, you would have had black politicians demanding, you know, that you would have had people talking about taking his job. You know, you, by now he might have would have been and lost his job. You understand what I'm saying? You'd have had black celebrities out, you know, adding their two cents to it, the whole nine yards. But none of that. You get none of that. If you read this article, like I said, you don't see the word homophobic anywhere. You don't see the word transphobic anywhere. You understand what I'm saying? You don't, you, you don't see anybody demanding that this man make an apology. You don't see anybody, you know, declaring that this man needs to lose his job. None of that. So again, just showing that the white LGBTQ community is not as outraged by things and, is, and, and are not as upset by things as they put out to be when it's somebody black, when it's coming from the foundational black American community, when it's coming from the foundational black American community. Oh, here come the black politicians. You understand what I'm saying? Here, here come the black LGBTQ puppets, you know, uh, um, here come the black celebrities. Here comes everybody demanding apologies. You know, they threatening people's jobs. They threatening people's livelihoods. You know, they're talking about boycotting people. They're talking about banning this and banning that. You know, all of that, you, you know, you get all of this toxic masculinity. You get all of this when it's something that's coming from the foundational black American community. But when it's coming from any other community, any other group of people, and they're saying the same things, then you don't get all of that. You don't get all that backlash. 
You don't get all that, the whole community being slammed, the whole community being labeled as homophobic. You don't get all of that. So I just wanted to use these stories and these articles to point out the difference in how the white LGBT reacts to criticism, how they react to, 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 to people just refusing, you, you know, to, to let their agendas or whatever be pushed in, in their different events or their organizations or their schools or whatever. I just wanted you to see the difference between how they react when it's non-black folks, when it's non-foundation of black Americans. There's a, there, there's a, their reaction is totally different. You don't get that same outrage. You understand that? that same fake outrage. You don't get that same fake outrage. You don't get that same labeling and the same names being called and the same bashing. You don't get that when it's somebody that's a part of a non-foundational black American or, or, or somebody that's non-black period. But when it's somebody that's black or a foundational black American, all of a sudden you got to do all this apologizing, you labeled, you bashed. You understand what I'm saying? You're criticized by everybody. You got everybody from everywhere coming out and everybody got something to say. Everybody got an opinion or whatever. There's a, and, and there's a punishment attached to it when you're black. You lose something. They take something away from you. They cause you to be deprived of something. And it's not like that when it's a non-black group. So understand that. That's what I wanted you to see. That's the reason why I did those three articles, those last three articles. The Orthodox Jews in, in the UK, the, uh, Miss Staten Island, and, and this article here about this mayor in New Jersey. Now, let me, let me, let me wrap this up so I can bring this back around to foundation of black Americans in voting. You do understand that most of the states where they are forcing this LGBTQ history or whatever to be taught in schools, you do understand that most of those are Democrat states. Most of those are Democrat states, states with Democratic mayors and, and, and Democratic governors and Democratic senators and all of this kind of stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So it's the Democrats that are really, really pushing this agenda. It's the Democrats that are really, really behind this agenda. Uh, if you look back in my videos, you'll see a couple of months ago, I did a video where early in the campaign, they actually did a LGBTQ town hall. Now, they've never done a black town hall. They've never done a foundational black American town hall, but they actually did a LGBTQ town hall where all the candidates talked about was the, 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 the issues that were impacting the LGBTQ community and how they would deal with and handle those issues specifically. And that's all they talked about during this town hall. They didn't talk about anything else. As you all know, when they first started the debates, most of the early debates were about immigration. Immigration and, 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 and all the protections and all the things that they planned on doing for the illegal aliens. But there has not be, there has yet to be a debate or a town hall where they specifically talk about foundational black American issues, where they specifically talk about what they're going to do for the foundational black American community. Where they specifically talk about issues that impact the foundational black American community only. And again, these are the people that some of you are determined that you're going to vote for. These are the people that some of you are determined that you're going to continue to vote for. Even though you know their records by now, even though you know that, 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 that creepy Joe Biden was the author of the 1994 crime bill, the crime bill that ushered in mass incarceration and that affects the black community more than any other community in, in, in the country. He was the author of it and he still stands by it. 
Even though you know his stance on reparations, he's had the same stance on reparations ever since the 1970s, where he said he'd be damned if he was going to pay for what his grandfather and, and, and his great grandfathers and all of that did. But you're still determined that you're going to pay for you're going you, you, you're going to support this man. This man who has made it clear that he's all about immigration and LGBTQ. And he isn't even discussing any issues that have anything to do with the foundation of black American community. And he's definitely not discussing anything that has anything to do with us receiving any kind of tangibles or reparations or anything. But this is the man that you determined that you're going to vote for. Or Bernie Sanders who has made it clear how he feels about us having any kind of tangibles. You understand what I'm saying? He's made it clear that, yeah, it's fine for the Jews to get them, but the black folks don't need them. And he supported the 1994 crime bill. He voted for it. But these are the people that are putting all of this, this fairy tale stuff, all of this illusion about all of this LGBTQ and, 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 and wanting to offer these people all of these special protections and all of this kind of stuff so that you at some point even lose your right to have a preference. You even lose your right to say no to a relationship with somebody that you don't want to have um, unless you're going to be called transphobic. And, 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 and possibly hit with a hate crime. But these are the po people that you want to vote for. These are the people that, that, that are working to take your rights away from you. Hold on a minute. But these are the people that you're determined that you're going to vote for. These people who have made it clear that all of these agendas are what they're pushing, are what they're supporting. But they have absolutely nothing to offer you, nothing to offer the foundation of black America, nothing to offer your community. They're not offering you any special protections. They're not offering you any special rights or any special privileges. As a matter of fact, they're using the very act, the 1964 crime, uh, the 1964 Civil Rights Act that was meant to give you all of that. They're using all of that to, 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 take, to take all of your stuff away from you that has never really benefited you and give it to all of these other groups. But these are the people that you want to vote for. These people that are making it clear that they are a part of this system, that they are a part of this beast system, that they are aligned with the Pope who's making it clear that he is a part of this beast system and he's not trying to change anything. And these folks over here are making it clear that they're the governmental arm, the, the political arm of white supremacy, of this beast system, and they're not trying to change anything. They're all pushing the same agenda. They're all a part of the same evil agenda. And they're trying to convince you that you need to continue to be a part of it. You need to continue to, su to, to support it. Because like I said, whether you live an immoral lifestyle or, or whether you think that you're still moral or you think that you still have your ethics or whatever and you're not participating in this or you're not participating in that or whatever, you are lending your support. You are silently lending your support to this evil beast system as long as you can continue to vote for its representatives. And that's what these people are. The Pope is a, is, is a representative of this system. Joe Biden is a representative of this system. Bernie Sanders is a representative of this system. All of these folks are representatives of this beast system. And they're trying to convince black folk to keep on selling out. Keep selling your souls. Keep selling little pieces of your soul. Even if you don't think you're doing that. Your, your vote is your silent way of supporting this beast system and continuing to pe perpetuate to your own children and your children's children this system. This system that is devouring your children. 
this system that is meant to continue to bug break your men. Make your woman obsolete. Because now your woman is being replaced by a man that's pretending to be a woman. But this is the system that you're supporting. This is the system that you support when you vote for these people. And all you get in return is all these lost black folks. All these black folks that are lost in, 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 in this madness, that are lost in this insanity. All of these black folks that have bought into the illusion and they're now believing the illusion and saying that the illusion is what's real and that reality is what's not real. And the reason why they have to push it to us so heavily is two reasons. One, depopulation. We've all, you know, we've all talked about depopulation. Uh, uh, Rizal Islam breaks it all down, you know, and he, and he talks about all of this stuff that goes back to Harry Kissinger and, and all of this and, and all of this depopulation, how they're trying to get rid of globally all of these people. And how that's one of the reasons why they, they push this LGBTQ thing so heavy is depopulation. But also, foundational Black American, our, our culture is here. Our, our culture doesn't come from Europe. It doesn't come. It, some of it comes from, um, from, from Africa, from the motherland. But most of our culture is here. Because culturally, as far as our language, as far as so many other things are concerned, culturally, we were separated from our African culture. And over the generations, we lost a lot of it. We lost most of it. And it's only recently in the past, what, maybe 20, 30 years that we have begun to learn more about our ancient African culture. But our culture is here. And culturally, as a people, we are the only people that are against any form of pedophilia. As a group, as a whole, as a culture, we are against it. As a matter of fact, we are against the, the whole notion of um, homosexuality, uh, and now I'm talking about culturally, um, homosexuality, the, 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 the transgender thing, as a culture, culturally, we are against that because we understand that it goes against nature. We understand that um, it cannot produce life. We understand that it goes against procreation. We understand that. So culturally, we are the only people that are against that whole system, that whole agenda that's being pushed. That's the reason why so much of it is being focused at us, at the foundation of black Americans. That's the reason why so much of it is being focused at us. That's the reason why you see all of these black folks coming out. You, you know, you see them pushing the Billy Porters. You, you know, you see them pushing the Dwayne Wade story with as far as his son is concerned. That's the reason why you see us being the ones that are always bashed and always called homophobic and the and the whole you, you know the whole foundation of black community you know is 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 called homophobic and transphobic and all of this black toxic toxic masculinity and all of that is because they're trying to get us to go along with the program because culturally we are the only people that just do not uh, we do not practice this stuff culturally. This is not stuff that, 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 that our culture promotes. This is not stuff that's promoted in our culture. Now, does that mean that we don't have pedophiles in the black community? No. Does that mean that, that, that we don't have homosexuality and all of that kind of stuff in the black community? No. It just means that it's not something that our culture promotes. It's not something that our culture was built on. It's not something that has always been a part of our culture. Pedophilia, pederasty, uh, 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 homosexuality, all of that stuff has always been a part of the European culture. Always been a part of it. 
It has been a part of, uh, of the European culture as long as there has been a European culture. But it has not always been a part of our culture. And that's the reason why so much of this stuff is targeted at us. And then, too, you know, if you can buck Blake, break the black man, if you can emasculate and effeminate the black man, and if you can do it to him from 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 as young as eight, nine years old, five, six, seven, three, four, five years old or whatever, then he grows up to be a non-threat. He grows up to not be threatening at all. So you have to understand there are reasons why all of this is focused at us, why we are the targets of all of this agenda, why so much of this is being pushed at us and pushed on us. Because we are the last group that just culturally just we just, you know, it's just not in us to just go along and just accept it. So you have to understand that you have to understand that, you know, that this is a plan, that this is a planned attack. This is not just coincidence. You know, this is not just an attack that they decided that they were going to start on us a year or two ago or whatever. This is a planned strategic attack. You might be you you, you might you, you might be able to say, you know, or, or you would you would be you would be within your rights to say that we are the last stronghold against the total deprivation of this whole entire uh, uh, society. Because everybody else is willing to go along with it. All the other groups are willing to go along with it. You know why? So that they can continue to have their classification of being honorary white folks. And that's the reason why they offer so much, you understand what I'm saying, to, to black people who they know want that same status of being honorary white folks, being honorary members of the dominant society. And that's the reason why they use them against us. They use them to be the faces of all of these different agendas. And they parade them out in front of us. But again, it's because of their desire to be honorary white folk, to be members of the honorary, to be honorary members of the dominant society. So we've got to push back against this stuff. We've got to push back against it. We've got to speak out against it. We've got to stop being afraid. You understand what I'm saying? We've got to stop thinking that if we just be quiet and if we just go along with everything, you know, and all of that, 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 you know, we'll have, we'll continue to have this false sense of safety and this false sense of security and this false sense of peace, because that's what it is. It's a false sense of safety. It's a false sense of security. If you are black in America, there's no real security for you. They can come for you at any time for any reason. And just thinking that because you're not speaking out, just thinking that because you're not speaking the truth, just thinking that because you're being quiet and you're being silent and you're going along with stuff, you know, and you're looking the other way and all of that, you think that that's going to keep you safe. That's not going to keep you safe. There's nothing actually that keeps you safe in American society. Being a member of the dominant society, being white does not necessarily guarantee you safety in the dominant society. Because if you're white and you speak out too much against the system, you speak out too much against the beast, you speak out too much against, against the different uh, uh, agendas that are being pushed and all of that, then you lose your place of safety. You, you, you lose your white privilege. And for those of you who, 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 who just refuse to speak out, who just refuse to speak the truth, who just refuse to push back, if nothing else, hold your vote. If nothing else, let your vote speak for you. 
If nothing else, let your vote say that you will no longer be a part of this system. That you will no longer keep silently supporting this system. That you will no longer keep silently supporting those who come out as representatives of this system. Let your vote speak for you, if nothing else. If you if you don't know how to find your voice, if you don't know how to speak out, if you don't know how to speak the truth, you know, if you don't know how to say this is wrong and I just refuse to go along with it, let your vote speak for you. Just like your vote silently says that I support this, hold your vote and let and let your vote silently say, I don't support this. I don't support this system. I don't support what this system is doing to my community. I don't support what this system is doing to my children. I don't support what this system has done to past generations, what it's doing to this generation and what it wants to do to the future generation. But that's the problem. See, I've understood that it's not that black folk don't know. It's not that Black uh, Foundation of Black Americans don't have access to the information. It's not because they don't know, because I know now that they do have access to the information. And, and, and it's not so much, cog, or what, what do you call it, cognitive, cognitive different dissonance, dissonance or whatever they call it. I've realized, you know, it, it, it has nothing to do with that, you know, Black people are silent. Black people are doing, you know, the things that they are doing um, as far as the bootlegs, the sellouts, you know, even just the average everyday uh, black person, not, not even the, the, the celebrities and all of that. These people are doing what they're doing because of their, their, their need to stay in a comfortable, safe place. They don't want to step outside of their comfort zones. They don't want to step step outside of what they think is their safety nets and, and all of that. So, you know, they, they look the other way. You know, they keep quiet. You, you know, they promote shit that they know is not right. They promote stuff that they know is targeting black the, 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 the black community. They do all of this, like I said, because they want to stay comfortable. They want to stay safe or whatever. And they don't want to open up. They don't want to say anything. They don't want to rock the boat. Or whatever the case they don't want to draw any attention to themselves or whatever the case until white supremacy comes knocking on their door and then when white supremacy comes knocking on their door they want everybody to protest they want everybody to speak up they want everybody to have something to say they want everybody to be you, you know to be pro-black when it comes to their doorstep but as long as it's not affecting them as long as it's not affecting their families as long as it's not affecting their everyday lives they, they they just they just want to stay comfortable they want to stay comfortable and they want to stay in this illusion of i'm comfortable i'm safe as long as i don't say anything as long as i don't rock the boat you know as long as i don't push too back or too, or too hard or whatever so you know that's what it's all about and for those people who are in that place and those people who are in that position for, for some people it's fear you know, for, for some people, it's fear. It's, 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 it's an honest fear. But for other people, it's just, I, I just don't want to be, I, I, I don't want to be inconvenienced. You understand what I'm saying? I, I don't want to be uncomfortable. You know, I don't want to draw any, uh, uh, any uh, 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 unnecessary attention to myself or whatever. And, and, and for those people, even for the scary folks, to, for the folks who are actually scared, the folks who are actually scared of, of drawing the attention of the white supremacists, drawing the attention of this government, drawing the attention of the beast or whatever the case may be. For those folks, let, let me tell you how you can you, you, you can be a part of the truth and not have to open up your mouth. Keep your vote to yourself. Keep your vote to yourself and stop voting for these folks that represent this system. You know, and, and, and if you do that, then you can you can maintain, you know, your illusion of safety, your illusion of peace, you you know, your illusion of security, your illusion of comfort and, and, and all of that. Just keep your vote to yourself. And that'll be your silent protest. That'll be your way that you silently protest. That'll be your way that you silently let it be known that you do not support this system. But all black folk need to be doing it one way or the other. 
Now, we all need to be doing it with our vote. We all need to be doing it with our vote. We all need to be, you, you know, speaking out against this stuff. We all need to be pushing against this stuff. We all need to, you know, to, to stop being so scary and, and to stop being so concerned about our comfort and, 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 and you know, and, and buying into this illusion that we're safe and, and that we're comfortable and that we're okay, you know, as long as we don't do this and as long as we do, don't do that or whatever. But since we're not going to always be able to get everybody, you know, on that uh, on that road and we're not going to all be able to get everybody on the same page as far as that's concerned, we can all do it with our vote. We can all do it with our vote. And that's, the, and that's the main reason why I came here today. That's the main reason why I presented you with these articles and these stories. That's the main reason I, I just wanted to show how it all connects, how it all comes together, and how it all can be affected by the foundational Black American vote. Why would you want to continue to vote for a system that is against you? Why would you want to continue to support people with your vote that are representatives of a system that is against you? A system that if, if, if it does not completely destroy you, it at least keeps you oppressed. It at least keeps you at the bottom. It at least keeps you subjugated. It at least keeps you broken. If it does not completely destroy you. Because the plan is to completely destroy you. But since, 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 since history has shown that you're not so easily destroyed. And you're not so easily gotten rid of. Then the least we can do is keep you under our thumb. Keep you subjugated. You understand what I'm saying? Keep you enslaved, whether it's physical uh, uh, slavery or mental slavery or whatever. That's the least we can do. Why would you want to keep supporting a system that feels like that about you? A system that has shown down through history that it cares nothing for you. A system that it really has shown that it cares nothing for its own. So if it cares nothing for its own, of course it cares nothing for you. That's just like you're going to give your baby to a woman who has clearly shown that she don't give a shit about her own children. But then you're going to expect her to love yours. Okay, this system has clearly shown that it doesn't give a damn about its own. So if it doesn't care about its own, what makes you think it's going to care about yours? So I, I, you know, I, I'm trying to understand, you, you, you know, and, 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 and like I said, now I figured it out. It's just because it's just easier. It, it, it's just easier. And black folks, we have got to get out of what's just easier. Because you don't want to fight because, you, you, you know, you don't want to be inconvenienced because you, you, you don't want to do what, what's hard because you don't want to travel the road less traveled. You know, you don't want to travel that road. You don't want to go down that path that's less traveled. Why? Because that path is going to have a few more obstacles. That path is going to have a few more detours. That path is going to have, you, you know, a little bit of more stuff in the road that you're going to have to either find your way around or find your way over or find your way under or, 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 or you're just going to have to stop and move some of that stuff out of the road. Because it's the path that's less traveled. But I just wanted to bring you this information. You know, I just wanted to bring you these articles. I just wanted to bring you these stories. And I just wanted to tie it all in together and show, first of all, how the foundation of Black uh, American community is being targeted by a whole lot of these different agendas. We are being targeted and, 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 and the biggest one that we're being targeted with right now is all of this LGBT trans stuff that they got going on. And I wanted to show you the difference between how other groups and other communities are treated based on how we're treated as far as all of this homophobic, transphobic mess is concerned. 
And, and I wanted to show you how the Democrats tie into all of this and how the Democrats are promoting all of this and they're pushing all of this. And I wanted to show you how your vote matters. Your vote matters. Your vote matters in keeping it to yourself and not continuing to perpetuate this, this, this madness, this insanity. And stop supporting these folks that are constantly pushing this insanity onto you and your children. I just wanted to tie it all together. I just wanted to make it, I just wanted it to make sense. And I wanted to give you some history and I wanted to start to, to, to start at the top and work down. That's the reason why I started with the story about the Pope. That's starting at the top. And I wanted to work my way down. So, you know, I, I most of the articles, I didn't read them all. But like I said, all of these articles will be linked in the description box. Um, like I said, up in the card somewhere, I will have um, a link to the video I did where the, the, the candidates did this LGBTQ town hall where they talked about nothing but LGBTQ uh, issues. I will have that um, in the cards up here in the, in the video somewhere. And, you know, I, I strongly suggest that you, you know, that you go to, to, to these different articles and that you read the whole entire articles and that you do a little bit of research and that you find other articles and that you understand that this is the kind of stuff that they're working on. And all of this stuff is closer than you think it is. That's the reason why you had the Kamala Harris and, and, and Cory Booker pushing this whole anti-lynching bill when we already had legislation against lynching. You understand what I'm saying? And, and 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 lynching is not happening the way it used to happen back in the day. You understand what I'm saying? They're not people gathered around like, like they're at a picnic or like they're at a social event. You understand what I'm saying? Taking pictures of everybody being together while they're lynching some black man and burning them. It's not being done that way. Most of the lynching that's being done now, you, you know, they're trying to act like these, these lynchings are suicides. You know what I'm saying? Folks with their hands and, and tied behind their head, I mean, by, but with their hands tied behind them and all of this kind of stuff. Somehow or another with your hands tied behind your head, you still manage to hang yourself. But there's already legislation out there that takes care of, that's supposed to take care of lynching. This Equality Act. All of this stuff that, 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 that's coming out of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that was supposed to be just for us. That's so all of these people can have all of these special rights and all of these special protections aimed at you. But you have to understand the black community, we're not the ones making, writing these laws. We're not the ones pushing to pass these laws. We're not the ones getting these laws passed. So we can't discriminate against anybody. We can't be homophobic really towards anybody. But it's our community that's always pointed out as being so homophobic and so transphobic and all of this. So I wanted to make sure that all of this stuff tied in so that you can understand how it is our community that's being targeted. And you understand the reason why. So, you know, please go in the description box. Please read these articles. Find other articles. You understand what I'm saying? Learn something. And even if you never lift your voice, even if you never speak out, even if you never verbally or publicly push back against anything, at least privately do it. And you can start by withholding your vote. You can start by not supporting these people that are supporting all of these negative agendas. And all of these people that are, are, are pushing and promoting all of this stuff that, 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 that's, that's targeted negatively towards the foundational black American community, towards your own community. And for all my LGBTQ people, if that's what you are, that's what you are. 
That's your business. But understand that you are black first. You are black first, you are black second, and you are black third. And understand that the dominant society, even if you don't want to see yourself as black first, the dominant society always sees you as black first. They always see you as black first. Anything else that you might call yourself, anything else that you might claim to be is secondary to them. They always see you as black first. If you're a black immigrant, even though you try to separate yourself from the foundational black American and you and you want to make sure people understand, no, I'm not black, I'm Nigerian. No, I'm not black, I'm Haitian. No, I'm not black, I'm Dominican. No, I'm not black, I'm Hispanic. No, I'm not black, I'm this, that, and the third. Okay, well, that's the way you see yourself. But understand that the dominant society sees you as black first. Now, they will continue, you, you know, to put to, to tolerate you. You understand what I'm saying? And they may even continue to, you know, to give you those little minuscule rewards and those little uh, uh, nigger trinkets or whatever. They may continue to do that as long as you push their agenda. And as long as you go along with their programs, you, you understand what I'm saying? And as long as you continue to allow yourself to be used as a puppet. But the moment you step out of that, they'll do you like they did Snoop. And they'll show you that in their eyes, you are black first. And you better get your black ass back in line. Or we got something for you. So that was my purpose for coming on here today. Yes, this is a long video. I know it's a long video, but there was a whole lot that, that, I, that I wanted to present to you. There was a whole lot of evidence and a whole lot of proof that I wanted to present to you. There was a lot that I wanted to tie in. And, you know, and, and that takes time. That takes time. But again, you know, even if you even if you don't want to codify publicly, even if you don't want to speak out publicly, even if you don't want to call yourself pro-black publicly or whatever the case may be, it, privately, sil the, the same way you have silently continued to support this system with your vote, silently remove your support from this beast system with your vote. And understand that no one or two black people, I don't care what they may look like they have. I don't care what they may look like they have accomplished. I don't care how much black celebrity it may look like they have. I don't care how many, much notoriety they may look like they have, how much money they look like they have or whatever. No one or two black people is better than the whole, better than us collectively. And it makes no difference who you are, where you are, what you have. If you're not supporting your people collectively, then you are a collaborator and you are an enemy to your people. And always remember what Professor Black Truth taught us. White supremacy always breaks its tools. So y'all have a good evening. Please like this video. Uh, please share this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please click that, nail button, that bell notification so that you can be notified when we upload videos. Please go to the description box and check out these articles. Read these articles for yourself. Um, of course, like I like like I always say, you know, if you decide that you want to support the channel, uh, uh, the PayPal for the channel to, it will also be in the description box. But um, yeah, you know, uh, uh, black folks, is, you know, it's time for us to just to sit back and ask ourselves that question: Who, what do we really want to support? Who do we really want to support? And do we really want to keep giving this system our support? Do we really want to keep giving the representatives of this evil beast system our support?
Y'all have a good night.